If you're not happy tonight, it's because you're holding on to something that stinks. It's called yourself. You're holding on to your own life and you're clutching it so hard. It's causing you to frown and strain. So you just let go of that tonight. Because you can't serve God and you too. You try all you want, you beg God all you want, nothing's going to happen. You can plead with God and you can say and tell God how much you gave in the offering, how many times you've been in church. But until you let go of your life, you're not going to have His. You cannot serve yourself and God to tonight. You go ahead and practice. I don't care how hard it is for you to let go of yourself long enough to worship Him. Put yourself in the back seat long enough to let God be God. It's true. Over and over again, I've, saw, I've, I've witnessed those who know how to worship God. You see two things happen in their lives. Nothing that they have that they possess do they call their own it all belongs to God they're not all wrapped up in their possession they're in debt for the kingdom of God not just in debt for themselves hallelujah hallelujah that is a rare breed of people that are in debt for the kingdom of God there is very few people who have a stack of bills in the kingdom very few and and that's why there's very few people that really serve God really go with him and really go all the way with God those same kind of people are the ones who lavishly worship Him. The most beautiful thing that I have seen in creation is someone totally emptied of their own will. Sitting before the presence of God, they're not asking God for A, B, C, and D. They're just totally yielded, saying, Lord, here am I. Feel me fully with you. I have no other interest. There's not a more beautiful thing in all creation. There's not. And I pray that your eyes would be open to see it, how beautiful that is. That's really the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, some of you need to hear the message of the Lord Jesus Christ to go sell all that you have and give it to the poor. And God's talking about the poor to whom the gospel is preached, those who are without the knowledge of salvation. Go sell all that you have so you can be happy. So that you won't be so confounded with yourself, so caught up in yourself, asking so many questions, turning so many different directions. You're now free to learn how to follow the Holy Ghost who speaks so clearly and so definitely. And there's such a great need right now for those who begin to move in the Holy Ghost and won't be false witnesses and misrepresentation. Could you imagine that somebody would follow your life and it be misrepresentation of the gospel. I believe that the greatest act of lawlessness and iniquity is to pollute God's word and then try to sell it in his name. To pollute God's word and then try to teach it in his name. Whether it's in word or in deed. Father's not asking for much. All he wants you to do is turn over what's most precious to you. Your life. Why? That's not much. You think that's something? That's not much. All flesh is as grass. It will soon be gone. And nobody will remember you if you live for yourself. Not even God. Not even God. All the, all the glory and accomplishments of men are as the flower that fades. A flower is beautiful. It looks good for just a season. It's gone. But they that do the will of the Lord abides forever. A name that will never be blotted out would be remembered forever. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's all wrapped up in your heart. You're never going to give your life until you give your heart. When you give your life, everything else, to, everything else is consecrated. Somebody put a gun to your head and said, give me all your money. You would. You know why? Your life's more precious to you than your money. It's true. You know, people go sit down at restaurants and they eat meals and they have no problem giving $100 or whatever, you know, for the meal. They come to church. 
God feeds them the riches of heaven and their soul and they act like it's some kind of a strain that put in ten. Because their heart's not in heaven. Their, the treasure's not in heaven. Don't tell me 10% of your finances is your treasure. Because it's not. That's what you can spare. It's what you can spare. You listen to me. God's looking for some people to go sell all that they have and come and follow Him. God's looking for some people to turn everything in and come follow Him. Let me tell you what we're doing, dear people. What we're doing is we're building the local church. We're committed to building the local church and have been for 34 years. At great cost and expense to ourselves, to ourselves personally, to ourselves. We committed to it. And I believe that if everybody would go get a plaque and make their automobile, uh, 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 put on a side of an automobile, says taxi cab to heaven, a taxi cab to heaven and get your automobile consecrated to the kingdom of God, the churches all over America would be filled because there's so many people who would love to be in church, but they don't have a ride. But God's people are too busy serving themselves, serving mammon themselves. Too busy. Oh, we'll work in on Saturdays if it fits in the schedule. God's not looking for 50%. You happy as you're like, oh God, I gave you 50%. He's not interested in it. He wants you to completely lose your life. So I said, nothing I do is good enough. Yeah, because you haven't sold out. You sell out, it's good enough. Done. Done. Hallelujah. Now, now, now the stars of heaven begin to shine. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, they're not stars like in the day, nighttime stars. They're stars like in the daytime stars. The sun. It's time to rise and shine, but you can't rise and shine until you be willing to move in the life of Jesus Christ. You can't move in the life of Jesus Christ until he quit serving mammon. There's too, too much of a glory and a presence of the Lord here in this place for people to stand around with nothing coming out of their mouth and frowns on their face. That's a sign you're holding on to your life. And I don't want you to be an example of the church. And I say disqualified. I say disqualified. Disqualified. Look around, children, young people, adults, anybody that's frowning, they're disqualified. Put an X on them. Don't listen to the thing they got to say. Don't listen to what they got to say. Disqualified. Disqualified. Still, uh, still agonizing outside the camp. That's why they got that look. It's an agonizing look. <laughs> or a straining look. It's agonizing. We're dedicated to building churches, planting churches. Right now, we're building a church in Oregon. We've had signs and wonders, miracles, things happen there. It's just wonderful things. I mean, one girl two years ago, she was healed of Lyme's disease, incurable disease. It was an advanced stage. It's perfectly healed two years later. I, I, just got a, I just got a report that, Ginger, if you're watching tonight, we love you very much. That her children just gave their life to the Lord. Hallelujah. Her adult children. Hallelujah. Mama's healed, stayed healed, stayed in church. Hallelujah. Praise God for the church. We're building a church. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's what God's giving you an assignment to do. And some of you can go ahead and go in debt for God. So what are your bills each month? Would be towards building something in the kingdom. Praise God. Everything you got is supposed to be going in the kingdom. 100%. And if you do, God will get you to a place where you can live off the 1% and give 99%. But as long as you hold on to yourself and you count your life more dear to yourself than the things of the kingdom of God, you're going to have very little. God will love you. His mercy will be there. He'll reach out to you. You'll have yourself a little a bubble over every once in a while, but your life will be like this. We'll never know whether you're going to be on or off. You know what I'm saying? Because you'll be just tossed back around, slapped around, up and down by circumstances. The things that you value will be able to control you. Are you listening to me? And tonight also, listen, and by the way, on that particular subject, we have here pledge cards. You go ahead and, and pledge a monthly debt to God. Monthly offering as we build the church out there. Monthly offering. Go ahead. I praise God for those of you who have. Some of you have given generously. Go ahead. Everybody do it. Go ahead and give. Go ahead. Give. Go ahead. Get your treasure in heaven. And God would be able to adjust your heart so you can receive more. Get your treasure in heaven, you'll worship more. Get your tre treasure in heaven, and I'm telling you right now, you'll begin to move in faith. 
Oh, that's true. That's true. Because you look and you measure how much treasure you have on earth. Many people have their treasure in their house and their earthly possessions. That's where their treasure is. It's nothing to do with the kingdom. It's nothing to do with the kingdom. If it has something to do with the kingdom, then you get yourself a Bible study in your house and you get people saved, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost in your house. And we'll say it's in the kingdom. Are you listening to me? Yes. Huh? Yes. Somebody said my treasure's in the in the in the in the in the kingdom. Well, can it be verified by your checkbook? Can it be verified by your offering about the total amount of money on the weekly basis that you give to God versus what you give to yourself? You have to ask yourself that. Because God's called you to do that. He's called you to serve in the kingdom that way. This church is totally devoted to evangelism, to evangelizing churches across the United States of America. We're totally committed to that. Why? Because we want to see the fire of God begin to move. I was just telling this morning, I was saying, we were just in a meeting where we did a, where we did a camp meeting conference and Kelly did one service on one of the mornings. Kelly Leger, I was so blown away. I'm saying, yeah, this is so beautiful. This is amazing. Just running with the message, running with the glory, running with the fire of God. I said, that's just all I want to do. I want to see people's lives touched, filled up with the Word of God. Just Word, flow it out of them. Word, 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 Word. People just sitting back, just blown away. Old men, preachers, hitting the ground, falling flat on their face. Just, come on, Word, 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 Word. It's fire God. I'm tired of seeing people live for themselves. I tell you, you Mark Kelly's life. There's probably nobody was more generous with their finances. And if you took the total sum amount that they give, because some people only make 20,000 a year, but they give 10,000. Some of you make 200,000 a year and they give 10,000. Huh? See the ratio? And that's why you can see those people make 20,000 a year, give 10,000, or give 50% of their income. You can see how lavish they worship. It's different. It's different. What? Well, because your heart's in it. You don't have to. Your heart's in it. What you're doing is a manifestation of who you are. You can't pretend here. You can pretend over whatever it else is, you, you know. Whatever religious activity goes on. But when it's real, when it's God, Holy Ghost stuff, you can't pretend. All is there's just a witness about where your heart's at. It's a witness about where your heart's at. We're absolutely and totally consecrated to missions in this place. To see more missionaries raised up over the next... 200 years and as long as I'm li alive and I know that I have a house I know I have a house going to carry on because I probably the, the, they're the best givers in this church they're going to carry on the mission because they're giving they're giving of their time they're giving lavishly of their time they give lavishly of their finances come on we're just inviting you to come on in. Don't miss out on your opportunity because I'm telling you right now, if you're not doing it here, you're not doing it anywhere because God's got you here. He don't have you out anywhere else. It's here. It's what's going on here. Not what's going on in your living room. Not what's, come on. Papa's held you responsible for what's here. For what's here. For what's here. It's true. You gonna let somebody else do your work, pay your bills? Huh? You're going to let somebody else do your work and pay your bills? Some of you have let somebody others do your work and pay your bills. You've let the kingdom of God work, kingdom of God bills. It's time for you to step up now. It's time for you to kick in. Get past your 10, 20% stuff. Break, break the alabaster box on him because you love him, because you're in a fellowship and a relationship with him. Not because you have to, not by constraint. Not because somebody's hanging you over the edge of a cliff, threatening you. Not because somebody's got a gun to your head. But because you give yourself over, you've lost your life and you give yourself over, you impoverish yourself to support the ministry. Because we're going to do, you know, we got, a, we got a lot of things going on right now. We're going to do, we're getting ready to do a crusade in Kashmir. It's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to cost everything you got. You ready to give? Yeah, I'm looking at you. I'm hearing you. I hear this response in the spirit. Because people talk about all the time, oh, how consecrated they are. How con oh, I, and they do it like this. Consecrated. 
totally surrendered. Holding on to the wallet, keeping her pockets shut. But don't touch my bank account, nor my earthly treasure. Oh, yeah. You're never going to move on with God there. You'll never move on. This is the doctrine of Jesus Christ for you to lose your life so that he, you can have his. Because there's a lot of folks that are just like the rich man. The Lord says, go sell all that you have. Give it to the poor. Come follow me. You'll have riches in heaven. They won't do it because they don't trust God. They don't really believe God's real. They can't prove God. They believe if they do that, somehow they're going to lose out. They're going to be on their own because they live by the arm of flesh. If I don't provide for myself, who will? Because God, I don't believe God can. Why don't you prove God? Why don't you just go ahead, before you get in too much deeper, why don't you just go ahead and prove whether or not he's really there? Why don't you prove God? I'm here tonight for a showdown. I got my guns. Showdown! Showdown. Hallelujah. Father's looking for some people that would be just yielded. It's a wonderful thing to have your hands open when you worship Him rather than clutched, holding on to stuff. This looks like you're about ready to fight somebody. <laughs> totally surrendered. Here it is. Here it is. Totally surrendered. Oh, we're getting ready to do a, we're getting ready to do a mass evangelism crusade in Cuba. And I, I want you to get real excited because you're the one who's going to finance it. And that means you're going to have to go in debt and get yourself some bills for God like you did on that car and on your clothes and on your house. One time I was at a meeting and, you know, somebody said you can give by credit card. And I thought, you know, I don't really think people ought to give by credit card. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, why not? They spend it on themselves by credit card. They need to max that credit card out for the kingdom of God so they quit spending so much on themselves. Get himself a kingdom of God bill. I mean, come on. How many people in this place? You went in debt. You're in debt right now, and you, out of your own pocket and expense, you pay a debt every month. Every month. This is all about the kingdom of God and souls. Don't raise your hands because I'm telling you right now. If you did, I want to I'd, I'd bring you up here and I want to see proof of that. I want to understand exactly how much it is. Don't you tell me it's 10 bucks. And it's going to some other ministry on the other side of the globe. Huh? Spend more than that on coffee. Or whatever it is. Tea or whatever it is people drink. Huh? How many of you gone and you're in debt right now? You're in debt right now paying God's bill. Think about it. We want to get you in debt. Hallelujah. And don't go in no debt for just, you know, six months. How about 30 year debt? How about a 30 year, how about a lifetime debt? You're gonna take out how many years you got left? Let's just say you got 20 years left, right? Let's just say that. You're gonna take out a debt for 240 months. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Well, why isn't that exciting? Why isn't that exciting? Why isn't that exciting? I know that you're talking to you about real estate is going to get a return 100 fold on your return. I'm talking about an eternal weight and glory. Give me a break. It's about time you get your eyes up and you see that there's something far greater going on around you right now than you. Yeah. 
Basta de Renea, Pacatea Lust. Morena, Basta Gale, Monsizista. Hallelujah. Habaroma, Sadea. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. At Corinth, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, they impoverished themselves supporting the ministry. And it was to them that the Lord said by his servant, Paul, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can think or ask, who supply to you all that you have need of according to his riches and glory. It was to them that he said, now God will supply all of your needs. He says to them, he give you all sufficiency so that you'll have all, everything that you need in all things. The most beautiful thing it is, the most beautiful thing. Can you imagine an entire church community so consecrated, so given over, where all their finances, it was about the kingdom of God? Do you know that there's Jews that live that way yes. who make millions of dollars and live in small apartments so that 95% of their income can go in to proselyting. There's Muslims that live that way. I don't know if it, hardly any Christians live that way unless they're in the ministry. So what we want you to do tonight is we want you to go in full time into the ministry. Say, so I'm going to take a vow of poverty. Yeah. Don't go quit your job and go live out there as, as a bum on the street. Go ahead and make more finances and learn how to, how to spend less on you and more on the kingdom of God. Check your checkbook. Look at your savings account tonight. Your earthly savings account versus your heavenly one. We keep our earthly one emptied out and our heavenly one jam-packed full. Why? Because we believe we're getting ready to leave this world and go over into the realms of glory. Father said, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. And it's about time people quit lying to themselves and say, God's got you in treasure when it's a, when it's a burden for you to every once in a while, go ahead and give God 10% of that which you know, we're not at 10%. We're not in the, that's the minimum. We're not even in the 10% covenant. We're not. We're in the 100% covenant. Everything I've bought, I've bought but everything I have is, is from you. Is it okay if I spend it and get a pair of shoes? Is it, ever, is it okay? And he answers like this. Here's how it happens. Suddenly you get ready, get ready to go do that. And now you've got a, a $46,000 bill. So we're going to take care of that first. That's about the kingdom. Now you've got a $100,000 bill. It's about the kingdom. Hallelujah. And every time it's a joy because your life is being poured out as an offering to him. You get to break your treasure. Huh? Come on, baby. Ain't it right? It's true. You know, I, I just, I'm going to tell you what we do. We never appear before God empty. And we never give to God a tip. What's convenient? Never. And we don't just give in this church. We give, we exam, everywhere we go, we minister, everywhere we go, we're in meetings, we give. We don't give little, we give generously. We write the check. Even though we're the guest speakers on the front row, we're going to write the check. And we're not thinking, oh, well, it's going to come back to us. Because I tell you right now, we pay to preach. People think that they got to go in the ministry to make money. You're going to go in the ministry to give yourself, pour out your life, lay down your life. And I tell you right now, you don't have to give everything to this ministry. What you can do is you can just go ahead and go overseas right now or go ahead and plant a church somewhere. We'll support you 100%. And watch what happens. Watch what's going to happen. You'll learn how to give everything. And you'll begin to understand how to receive all that Father has for you too. So we don't want you to be held back. We don't want you to blockade anything blocking you in your life. Huh? We want you to be able to just enjoy this fellowship. This privilege of knowing Him. 
Hallelujah. The robo shikila na Mumbai la na kesh te bay atara sutufe. Hallelujah. You know, I was recently contemplating, you know, just really wanting greater transparency. You know, I, I said somebody needs to do a, an app on total transparency, right? Which basically tracks everywhere you go electronically. I think, you know what God's people need to do? They need to turn in how much money they make per month or per year. So we can track their giving, not based upon a total dollar amount, but a ratio of their total earnings. So we can hold them accountable for their treasure. Because I'm telling you right now, the widow is always given all that she has. She's always giving her two mites. And, and the others are holding on and giving whatever tip they can give to God. Well, I got a spare. I'm going to tell you right now, if I got money in my wallet and it's offering time, it's going to be emptied out. I'm, not, I'm going to be sensitive to God. I, can't, I don't know what is wrong with people. I'm not giving God some little tip. He's not my waiter. I'm in this 100%. Come on, people. Where's your treasure? Where's your heart? They in the same spot. I can't imagine people having money in their wallet and they go looking through the wallet and they're deciding which one's the smallest bill that they can sneak out. Take the whole thing out and put it in the offering. You'll never find cash on me. You'll never find cash on me. How long will it last? Not 24 hours. Because I'm going to give it. Because that's the nature of God. That's a beautiful thing. But as long as you're holding on, He can't get anything to you. He's an amazing God. He'll even bless your stinginess. He'll give you a stingy harvest. Oh. He'll try your heart through your giving too. Find out where you're at. Oh, to begin to worship Him, to begin to fellowship with Him, to begin to know Him, to begin to lay down your life, to live for Him, to be yielded before Him, totally emptied. Oh, what a glory life. Oh, what a wonderful life. Hallelujah. To be burden free. And the Lord spoke to me the other day. He said, I'm going to tell you what the cause of heart attacks are. Men's hearts fail them for fear. All their stress, all their worry, all their concern, all their hand wringing, all their trying to do stuff for God. You need to try to do nothing for God. Surrender yourself. He'll do everything through you. If you've got to figure it out, it ain't even worth thinking about. I'm going to say it again. If you've got to figure out what you're going to do for God, and how you're going to follow God and how you're going to yield to Him and serve Him, it isn't worth the effort. God leads you to stay right where you're at until you get tired of living in a jail cell. Huh? Then you start screaming, somebody let me out of here. <laughs> and the Lord come and lock the door for you. Hallelujah. 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 Then you're not going to be bare and unfruitful. Come on, man. People come to meeting one, go ahead and try to minister to the souls that somebody else reached. No, you'd be a terrible minister to the souls that someone else's love rescued. You'll spoil it. Go get your own souls and minister to them. Hello. Hello. Are you listening to me? Get a flow going on in your life from heaven because you emptied out of you. God's looking for empty vessels tonight. He's looking for people who will surrender all and consecrate everything that they have. If God came to you tonight and asked you and said, is everything that you have and everything that you are belong to me? Would you say yes? Would you say yes? Or would you, in all honesty, go, no, it's, no, it doesn't. Because reality of it is, he's already said that. And it already is. And you already answered yes. You're just cheating. 
Are you listening to me? It's time for people to start trusting God because there needs to be a light into the world. I want, I'm so hungry for the moving of the miraculous power and ministry of Jesus Christ. I'm going to talk to you tonight about how that flows once again. See whether anybody's just going to continue on in the way that they're going or they're, they're going to listen and start doing what God commands and live in the line yes. and live in the plan. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Living in heaven. Amen. Living. Amen. See, the Lord said, I write these things unto you that your joy may be full. You're going to be sad if you just listen to them. You know, you just read them and then you don't do them. He wrote those things unto us that our joy might be full by the doing of it. Yes. I'm talking about joy-filled life. I'm talking about heaven on earth. Yes. Listen, I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you. There are times where we've had great bills in the kingdom of God and the people in this, in this church did not finance it. You did, you did your best within the framework of that which you have faith to do. You didn't go into debt and finance it. But God brought the provision from other unforeseen means. And you do it every time. But he's giving you an opportunity to get yourself full-time in the ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if people in here say, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take out a $20,000 debt. I'm going to go ahead and take a $20,000 line of credit. I'm going to give it all into the offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's going to be a monthly bill for me. It's going to be kingdom of God, Bill. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't get all sanctimonious on the fact that, oh, you want to be out of debt because you end debt up to your eyebrows for yourself. Now I'm giving you an opportunity to, to <laughs> equal things out a little bit. It still ain't equal. If everybody in this place gave as much in the kingdom of God as you did in the mortgage, your house, your car, all the rest of the stuff, my goodness gracious. You whew, the things that we would be doing. Even if you take your finances, go buy yourself a van, put your little sign, meta, uh, metallic, uh, one of those, uh, what, um, one of those um, magnetic signs on there that says, Taxi to Heaven. I'll be there to pick you up for church. Wow. Then your car would be a part of the kingdom of God. Wow. There's a harvest to be reached, but the laborers are few. They want to straddle the fence of commitment to God, but more commitment to themselves. They've not been willing to lose their life that they may live his. Losing your life is defined monetarily by your money that you possess because that defines your heart, because that defines your treasure. It does. I said it does. That's the Bible. Say amen. Don't sit there all gagged up with yourself like a Philistine has come and stopped up the well. Like a demon power dominating you. Are you listening to me? Yes. Good. Good. Because we want to see you guys get trained and we're prepared to go anywhere in ministry. Amen. And if you got to have your finances all worked out and figured out, you ain't going nowhere. Because you all bound down by the earth. You bound. Earthly bound. Man, I just want to get some people broke free here tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to get rid of your burden. Somebody said, I'm not sure what you're going to do with the money. And not into your business. Because God's not going to bless you based upon what's done with it. Because you're going to get the same reward if somebody does 100% what Jesus would do or if they did 100% what the devil would do with it nothing to do with you so you can't we're going to stop every lie of the enemy it's about what you're it's about what you're doing in the kingdom tonight about to, yes. everybody impoverishes themselves tonight comes into a vow of poverty to impoverish yourself for the kingdom to say I'm stepping up I'm paying God's bills step it up I'm paying God's bills come on girl I know it <laughs> I know it I know it. there's no problem for you to say that I know it because what I'm doing now is I'm tracking what, I'm, I, decided, I decided last week, I'm tracking what everybody's giving from now on. I'm going to know what everybody gives. So I can understand why some people worship and some people don't. And I'm going to make an estimate of what it is that you make a year. And I'm going to see what it is that you're giving out of a percentage to God. And I'm going to come by every once in a while and give you a little flash card. 
8%. God's got 8% of you. You've got 92% of you. You have 8% God. You're 8% God, 92% you. Wonder who you're serving. So we say, oh, you can't do that. Oh, yeah, I can. Remember total transparency? I'm signing up for the app. Why? Because I want, I want accountability. I want to be held accountable now. Why just Because your mind, deception is a cruel punishment upon the deceived. Deception works cruel, the cruel punishment of ignorance. Can you hear me? Yes. You're just lying to themselves. Lying to themselves. The worst possible thing you can be doing. It's better to go ahead and just say, yeah, I'm, I'm a, they say, half stepper somebody told me that for term the other day I said what's a half stepper oh the half in for God I'm like is there any full steppers <laughs> where are the full steppers I want to go to the church there because all about I've seen is half steppers and that's revival oh in the name of Jesus we're gonna bust through this thing eh? Amen. everybody's gonna take a vow of poverty tonight hallelujah to impoverish yourself. Amen. Give amen. everything you got in the kingdom. Amen. amen. I got five amens and about 50 people that look just like you. Or your sound right now is the same as it was when we worshiped a few minutes ago. <laughs> Jesus. Just. It's okay, just don't lie to yourself. All I'm saying is just don't lie to yourself. God's not going to force you. He's not going to make you. Just, just, don't be, just don't lie to yourself. Don't say you're all in with God. Don't say I surrender all. Don't say I totally yielded, totally consecrated when your money isn't in it. Because it's a stinking lie. It's a lie. So you wait till we sing the song. You know. I surrender half. I surrender half, half for you, Lord, half for me. I surrender half. Then you can sing along. You would be inspired. You'd probably be jumping around then. There's a, there's a huge mass of people to reach right here in this town. Right here in this town. You become a giver. And God will give you fruit. And you'll have fruit and remain. You begin to do what I'm saying, and you won't stand in this church. Having spent years in this church and don't have one soul in the house to show for it. Because I'm only counting the people that stand. I'm not counting, well, I invited people, Pastor. Well, if you get yourself free from you, God will make you fruitful so you won't be bare and unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord. He'll give you fruit. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. I want you, I want you to. Father, you know, Father just, Father wants us to get into the press of it. If you put a press on it. Is anybody in here, does anybody in here even believe that there's a possibility that you can't outgive God? Does anybody believe that there is a possibility that there's a possibility that you can out give God because we make the statement like this oh you can't out give God everybody goes amen amen really really think about it if you really believe that then it's no problem for you to go take and sell all that you have and give it to the kingdom it's no problem for you to empty out your savings account it's no problem for you to go in debt because God's going to be the fastest debt you've ever paid back. It's true, because you believe, because you really believe. You see, you get into this place, faith will begin to grow, faith will begin to mature, faith will begin to develop. I mean, we couldn't be more of an example of it. Look at the stuff that God shows you how we lay hold on stuff. Well, you think that was an accident? One or two people could say, no, I'm sure it's not. Can we say that again? Anybody think it's an accident? Really? It's not an accident. It's faith. It's a realm of faith. How does it come? Giving. 
Somebody said, how do you do that? Giving. Somebody said, you had a special anointing for these things. No, I have a special giving. Special giving for these things. Let's tell you, I want to tell you right now. If you belong to this church, you're responsible for building the local church. And if you're not doing it, you're simply not serving the Lord. You're not being obedient. And it's not out of have to, it's out of you get to, you want to, because you've got a fellowship with them. Amen. When you've got a fellowship with them, huh? It's just like the woman, it's like Mary, the, the, the sister of Lazarus. She didn't break the treasure, the alabaster box, because she had to. She's sitting there looking at her brother that the Lord raised from life to death. To life again. And she's like, I want to, right? Come on. I'm into this. I want, I want to be, I want Father's given us the power and the ability to go change the world. He's Amen. placed within our lives the responsibility so all heaven could be revealed. I want to see signs and wonders and miracles. I want to see a church get right enough so that God can bless it and bring in the great harvest that He's purposed to bring in. Hallelujah! And that cost everything. So we were going to be just happy to stand around and watch us give everything. Watch us run wide open. Watch us lay down our life. Judge the anointing of the meeting based upon how I flowed and operated in the gifts of the Spirit. Ha <laughs> ha! Nonsense! I'm going to judge the meeting based on how you operated in the gifts of the Spirit. How much anointing was coming off in your life. Huh? You're right? If I just sitting up here monotoning it with my glasses on, looking down at a page, reading it every once in a while, nodding off myself, you wouldn't want to come back, would you? And then why do you think about me? Having to look at you, some of you. I don't want to come back. I'm looking at the anointing in your life. My goodness gracious. Which brings me to the message tonight. about how God's here to teach us how to be a slave. Slave, servant to everyone. Hallelujah. 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 We'll just go ahead and sit down and we'll just go ahead and get in this. Everybody. Because what I'm talking about is not the constraint of human effort, but it is the flow of the Holy Ghost. It's the riches of heaven causing faith to flow out of us to enter into the blessed promises, to enter into the realm of His divine grace, to participate with Him. It's a narrow gate. It is a straight way. It is where Father takes you and I into this place where He shapes and forms us as clay yielded to the Master's hand, not resistant, not walking out your own plan, saying, I am doing what God has willed, but in total surrender, in total consecration. <laughs> Who? Moving into the realms of total loss and abandonment of your own life and denying of yourself to step out and begin to prove the Lord and to move in the realms of divine power, to move in the realms of glory, to move in the realms of faith, to move in the realms of supernatural supply. People say, well, I'm just trying to get my house paid off. You're training your spirit. Then you're going to be old. You're going to sit in that old, stuffy, stinky place till you die. And never know the beauty and the glory of living this life. I'm not going to sit around and watch people waste their life on vanity and vexation of spirit consumed with their own fleshly lust pew no way no way i'm gonna reprove you i'm gonna rebuke you i'm gonna challenge you i'm gonna correct you i'm gonna call you to what god says to do and if you want to be stubborn and do it your own way it's your fault it's your fault and i leave you to the lord i'll leave you to the lord
as to whether or not you make heaven. He's the, he's the righteous judge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cry out. I'm going to declare what God has purposed. I'm going to believe God, the Father, that people's hearts are going to be stirred because they begin to lay hold on His love. And that love begins to translate in a compassion for the lost where it doesn't matter what the cost. It's no price too high to pay. No service too hard to render. No suffering too hard to bear. Very few people want to know in fellowship of his suffering. But I do. Because the glory is not worthy to be compared. The fellowship with him, to be able to see him, to be able to interact with him. Woo! To live in this mantle of glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be carried out of the meeting by angels. The other night, I'm telling you right now, I was carried out by angels. To be with, to be to be to to go. Huh? To go to bed so tired at night and you know that every bit of the energy was spent on the kingdom. Oh, my shot of high up. I'm living the dream. I want to get you into this. I want to get you into this investment program. Hallelujah. If you lose your life and you can have his. Ha! You, you give everything that you have and he'll give everything that he, you give everything you have to him, he'll give everything that he has to you. <laughs> if you live his life, he'll live through you. He says it in so many ways. Ha! Ponakate o Moshirinandi. To where the love in your life and the flow of the love of the spirit in your life begins to cause you to profit. So that you're not those who are speaking in tongues of men and angels, but you do not profit, you do not excel, because you do not know how to live in this realm of the heavenly flow. <laughs> because you're all bottled up with the things that you know. You're holding on to your lie. And it's witnessed by your bank account. It's true. It's true. It's reproducible over and again. Over and over and over again. I'm telling you right now, if everybody in this place tonight, after this level of anointing, after this plea of God, you don't go in debt for the kingdom, I'm going to be extremely disappointed in you. I'm going to point at you and laugh. Because it's so foolish to have such a great opportunity in God and have no ability to understand it. Huh? Are you listening yes. to me? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord says, those that I love are rebuke. I really, I really am a part of that because you know, the people that are closest to me, if I look across and I see Daniel, he's not giving something lavishly. I'm going to get on him. What? How much did you give? You did what? You gave how much? Come on, man. Where are the valiant men? Where are the honest men? Where are the true men? Where are those who have heart and passion for God, who believe him, who will walk with him, who will leave everything behind as Abraham did, who go all the way with God? Where, is the, where are they? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Come on, man. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm just, see, see, Father, I mean, it's like, see, Father bringing up a whole new radical bunch of people who care not for a house and care not for cars and care not for lands and care not for all this other nonsense and all the little stuff you go buy for yourself while souls are going to hell. I wasn't raised in a culture of spending my money on me. I was raised in the culture of kingdom of God, spend your money on everybody else. So I really have a hard time understanding that demonic culture that people are caught up in. Spend my money on me. Huh? Is this true? Is this true? Maybe you would watch me that know me. Is it true or not? I don't even understand. I have no understanding of it. I'm none. I'm none. God wants you, Godfather wants you to take a hold of your heart, change your heart, give you Father's heart. 
give you his heart. He wants to move you out of your self realm, your stuffy, stuck up self realm. Get you over in the glory. Must I look at another group of Christians full of themselves? For I'm so hungry to see those that are born of God full of the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you right now, you can't have both occupying the same tabernacle at the same time. It just doesn't work. Self-dominated people don't know how to flow in the Holy Ghost. It's very sporadic. So they got sporadic. They don't know how to, they don't know how to draw on the supply of God when the going gets tough. They got to get in the prayer line. They don't know how to have joy in adversity. Huh? Because they've never learned how to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. They've hung on to their own life. God, the Holy Ghost, isn't going to force anything on you. But God loves those who He loves. He's going to rebuke. He's going to correct. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm telling you right now, when I looked at the total amount of finances that came into the church, and over half of it was from my family, I'm like, what? What? You know, give me a break. But I know, I know there's people in here, I know you don't have very little and you give almost everything. That's why I'm listening. I understand. I'm going to call you into account. What are you doing? What are you doing? Sitting around here nodding your head at me. Give me a break. Get real. I'm going to hold it up in front of everybody. So here's what it is. Huh? Because God's going to do it. Father's going to do it. He's going to hold up in front of all the angels. It's already being held up in front of all the angels. It's already going on in public display before angels and before God. Our life. How we feel about what he did for us is revealed through our obedience and our consecration in response to him. And you need to get on your face till, you, till heaven touches your soul. So we don't have to constantly shake you over the, you know, the... <laughs> the misdeeds of your life to get you to move. Come on, people. Let the church of Jesus Christ arise. Yes. Well, we just expect the pastor to flow in the gifts of the Spirit, bring the Word, worship for us, pick up all the people, get the church, you know, into a position where it has the finances to take care of everything that he's going to go do in ministry. You know what? Kingdom of God don't work like that. No. It don't work that way. It does not work that way. So I just want to talk to you tonight about just giving. I want to talk to you tonight about yielding. I want to talk to you tonight about submitting to the things of the Spirit to the things of the Holy Ghost so you can hear His voice, so you can move with Him, so you can start enjoying the, whew, <laughs> the heavenly life all day long. Yes. I've been talking about your stuff. You're getting all stressed out. Y'all uncomfortable. And in the response ought to be a rather, yeah, I'm, I'm releasing it. But what's happened is you've trained your spirit in the wrong way. You train your spirit. God gave us his word so that we could live in heaven to train our spirit. To say, okay, this is the law of God. This is the way of God. This is what Father wants. This is how we do it. I'm going to train my spirit to move with him. What, you just going to get to heaven and flop down let God take care of everything? You bum. Are you listening to me? Yes. I'm just going to get to him flop down. I say, I'm just deserving. I'm just empowered. People are talking about how the millennials feel they empowered. I've been watching. If that's what a millennial is. I've been watching that all my life in the church. <laughs> he paid it all for you and me. Yeah. He gave us everything. Amen. How can you sit back and not give you everything? Yeah. How? 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 And feel right about yourself. How? You tell me how, because I don't understand that. You need to break that down for me. You need to educate me because I don't understand that. I don't understand that kind of empowerment. I understand that. 
and I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to accommodate that. And I'm not going to fit into that kind of a culture. Why do you? Why are you? I mean, I'm telling you right now. Somebody said to me the other day, well, you're going to have to be saying bye to this and bye to that. Look, I want to say bye to everybody. <laughs> With tears in my heart, eyes and heart. Say goodbye to you as you go full time in the ministry. But if you, maybe you're not going to go full time ministry. Maybe you just don't really feel that. Well, then you want to work full time in the ministry, but your job being, you get in yourself a place where you have minimum amount of expenses that you spend on yourself so that you can give more into the kingdom. You watch what God will do. You start living like that. You watch what God will do. You don't have to have all this overhead. You can give more. Pour it out on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you'll just obey this word tonight, if you obey this word tonight, you'll step into a whole new dimension of living in God. You won't have to fast. It'd be somewhat of a prayer meeting, but it won't be a long one. And you'll step into a whole new dimension in God. Whew. I'm telling you, just like, whoa, right over into the miracle realm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you feel it? I mean, you can. You can step right over to the miracle realm right now. Just don't believe it. If it's too good to be true, it probably isn't. Then you're not making heaven. I'm making heaven and you don't believe in Jesus nor in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire huh? want to just be a one way street oh God give me this oh God give me that oh God do this to me oh God do that through me he's waiting for you to surrender that's all Lord can't you use my life on a half time basis part time basis he says you can't serve you and me too you can't serve mammon and bond too I am Papa comes to us, Holy Ghost comes to us to train us. If I can get people to connect, if people will connect, they will develop. I can prove it, it's provable. Those who connect with me, they develop in the anointing. Did you hear Joshua preach on Sunday night? Yes. If you didn't get the YouTube. Yes. <laughs> you should hear Daniel preach right now. Wow. Bring in his power in the house. Power and power in the house. Accompanying anointing of angels and Holy Ghost. You connect, you'll develop. You develop, you'll go, you'll be sent. It doesn't take too long enjoying Father's presence. And you're going to hear him say, who will go for us? And you'll be saying, I'm, I will. I'm, I will. You can tell who's sitting in his presence, who's encountered him, because they're like, I go, I go. They don't, they don't say, how much is it going to cost? Because that's already been settled. Everything. I've already settled that. <laughs> People who hold on their life, they're not going to yield. They're not going to submit. They're not going to be servant. They're not going to understand how to move in the dimensions of the person of Jesus Christ. You're not going to give it. You're not going to give it. Because it's an entirely opposite thing to the self realm. Jesus did nothing of himself. He completely denied himself. He had no savings account. He had nothing. No bank account. He had a heaven account. Amen. And look at all the riches that he had. Hallelujah. I want that life. I want those. I, I signed up for that life. I signed up for the faith life to get myself so far out there, so committed in the kingdom of God. I am so committed right now financially in the kingdom of God that I have to live in faith and miracles. I have to. And so because I have to, I get to. You're, people sit around wanting to. Well, you're not willing to. You're not willing to. You want to live in the comfort of your own provision. You want to live in the comfort of your own predictability, your own logics, your own reasoning. You can do it. So, to the mind, 
I'm going to stand comfortably in the company of Enoch and Elijah. I'm going to stand in the, com uh, comfortably in the company of Paul and of Peter. I'm going to stand in the company, comfortably in the company of the saints that paid it all, that gave it all, that laid down their life. Your life is more precious to you than anything else. And you better be careful because you may be in a situ situation in your life where that if you were threatened with your life to renounce Jesus Christ, that you might just do it. You need to go ahead and give it all. Tonight. Yeah. You know, I said this morning, if Mary would have said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I really want to bless the Lord. I really want to pour out the alabaster box. But you know, I, I, I just, I'm going to wait till next week. She didn't know he was, he was going to be crucified within two days. She would have missed it. People wait until next week and missing it all the time. Huh? You know why the rich man did not obey the word of the Lord? God spoke to him. You know why the rich man did not obey God and go sell all that he had and give it to the, and give it to the poor? Because he didn't feel it. Because he just didn't see it. It just wasn't real to him. <laughs> Most of what God said, ain't gonna feel, you ain't going to feel it. It ain't going to be real to you. You're not going to understand it. But if you learn how to walk with God, you'll come into a place of being under authority and you'll obey and you'll obey yourself right into here and you're, for your, you'll obey yourself right into a place where you hear directly from God and you can feel it and you can give witness to what's being done. Amen. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, Papa's going to take you in a direction you don't want to go. Desert. Long way around, not shortcut through the garden. It's true. He try you. When I should be tried of him, I should come forth as gold. Hallelujah. Can you say that tonight confidently? If you can't, we want to bring you to a place. That's what we're doing. We want to bring you to a place that you can stand up and you say, I am there too. To where every sermon, the fire of God burns in you that much brighter saying, I've just got to go. I've just got to do more in the kingdom. I've just got to lay my hand to the plow. I've got to see that which Christ Jesus ordained for me to do. I've got to have that which he commanded me to be. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. To you just come and you explode on the inside. You say, Pastor, you've got to release me because I've got to go. Amen. Amen. And we see the flow of heaven upon your life and we're going, ah. Oh, you go, man, we're with you 100%. Hallelujah, go, because there's going to be revival everywhere you go. Because yeah. guess, guess what you get to take wherever you go? The anointing and relationship you have with the Father. Amen. And some of you, I'm just going to be Frank. I'm just going to be Mark. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be in that meeting. I really don't know if I'd want to be in that meeting. Because I want some Holy Ghost flow. Amen. I want some... I want some I want that which comes out of consecrated, fully committed, surrendered, yes. empty yes. vessel lives. Yes. Where when God begins to flow, it ain't mixed up with a bunch of human stuff. Amen. Holding on to my own interest, holding on my whole life. I want to drink out of that polluted fountain. I want a pure fountain. Where it has no mixture in it. Give me Jesus. What a privilege to live in his purity, to flow in the anointing, to have only him. To speak with the majesty of his words, with his authority. To say that the devil's go. And then the meetings we were in, see so many people set free. So many demon spirits leave out of people. Just, just busted, broken. Hey, it's true, babe. It's just displays of the power of God. I love that. I'm, I love that. I live that way. You can start living that way. You don't care about yourself anymore. You're not all consumed with yourself anymore, all high on yourself anymore. You see somebody in the grocery store that's sick and ailing, you'll make a spectacle. You say, I'm praying for you right now, and God's going to heal you if you'll just believe. Wow. 
call somebody now. Could you imagine what, what this United States would be like if all God's people were acting like Jesus? They say there are 750 million Holy Ghost people on the planet right now. 750 million. That means only each person is only responsible for re reaching eight other people in the whole world's reached. Whole world. Entire world. Whole population. Amen. Eight. You're responsible for eight. Where's your, where's your one? Have you got your one? Now where's your two? Just get your eight. Start aching for your eight. Start laboring in prayer. Start sacrificing it. It's challenging. It's challenging. Put 293. Was it 293? Backpacks. 293 backpacks. And you had some signs and wonders. I'm so thankful for everybody who went and helped. Get right in the big middle of the ministry. It was a sacrifice you poured out your life. Praise God for the people that showed up for the day. But you guys put probably 10, 15, 20 days in it. Maybe more. More. Because you labor for that stuff. It's not all warm and fuzzy and convenient, is it? No, it's sacrifice. But it's good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me just, I want to start over here in, in 1 Peter. In chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5. So I want, to, I want to just teach you how to begin to move with God. You know, I believe people get baptized in the Holy Ghost. I believe people get born again, truly saved, baptized even in the Holy Ghost. But they never go on with God. They never develop. Number one, they don't connect. They don't connect properly. I'm not your peer. I'm not your peer. You understand me? Yes. I'm not your peer. I'm your gift. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And that is the second. If you want to, if you want to be a gift, good. Good. And you'll come to understand how you lay down your life and you'll come to understand how to grow and mature. And Father graces you with that and he honors you with that. And that's his business. I'm not your peer, I'm your gift. Every minister on the planet is not your peer, they're your gift. They become a mouthpiece, an oracle. You're supposed to be an oracle too, but if you don't know how to connect, you'll never develop into one. It's true. Father wants to teach you how to come under authority, how to imitate Christ Jesus, how to imitate God, how to walk in his love and imitate him. This is where people just get shut down. They get born again. They truly get saved. They truly even get baptized in the Holy Ghost, but they're not willing to be developed in God. They're not willing to connect. They're not willing to be developed in God. They want to do things their own way. You pervert the word of God. You're perverting, perverting the truth. Father's looking for some people who will fall upon the rock and be broken. Amen. Father's looking for some people you can train to walk in lowliness and meekness. Father's looking for some people who delight to do His will, who say no to their will, who look at every opportunity to deny themselves as, an, as something to be ex exceedingly happy about. And on my tribulation, I'm exceeding glad. Because it's not about me. This is about the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And I'm suffering these things for the kingdom. Uh, I want everybody to feel that. I want you in that. You're missing out on a good time if that isn't happening in your life. It's something you should want. It's not something we should beg you to do. This is what you signed up for. This is you, you came into heaven. You didn't come into heaven for God to serve you, although he does. You came into heaven for you to serve God. You didn't come into heaven so God can alter his ways on your behalf. You am in heaven to be gifted, to be taught his ways by the Spirit of the Lord. And to say, this is the, this is the best possible kind of life that I could ever imagine to have. God gave it to me as a free gift. And I'm willing to be all, you know, caught up in the human development program. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm feeding the flock of God tonight. Praise yeah. God. 
I'm doing verse 2. 1 Peter 5, I'm doing verse 2. Feeding the flock of God. Hallelujah. Whew. Not by constraint, not for money. Now, you're supposed to finance me to go. You know, we go to places, when we go to places, when they give us an offering, we have it written out. The check's written out to the abiding place ministry. It rarely, really never covers the bills because you pay to preach. It's the way it works. This is the way it works. Sound good? That was good. <laughs> Because it's a faith walk, and Papa does supernatural things through it. But when we go, I mean, we were just, we were just in, a, not this last place that we are in. It's, it's tough anywhere you go. And anybody watching me right now, <laughs> on the web, and we've been to your place, I want to let you know, disclaimer, okay? We enjoyed every minute of it, believe me. We loved it. We were blessed to be there. But it's a sacrifice. It cost us. It cost us our sleep. It cost us being in a strange room in a strange bed that many times isn't much different than a third world country. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And we say that with all respect and, and, and with all honor to everything that's ever gone down, but it's just the way it is because many times there's just not any more. There's, that's all there is. That's all there is. That's all there's available. Especially when you go out in the sticks. That's all there is. Think about it. And, you know, and I value my time. And if I was to monetize my time, I would say that somebody owes me somewhere around 40,000 bucks at the end of the week. Somebody owes me around 40,000 because I put in about 20 hours, 19 to 20 hours a day. Are you with me? Yes. Somebody owes me about 40,000 at the end of the week. Who's paying? Who's paying? Who's paying my bills? Who's paying? Papa. Papa's paying. He's taking care of it. I delight to do as well. I'm enjoying it. Don't understand. But you have responsibility. You do. As the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have responsibility. As the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, they have responsibility. I'm going to tell you right now, no one comes to our house here at the Bible Place Ministry. It costs them money. Never. Never. Because if not enough came in the finances, I'll rob the piggy bank, so to speak. I'll bust the bank. I, here it is. Take it. Well, make sure you're taken care of. Hallelujah. You got, that's just revival people. I was just with some revival people. We just received one again, once again, one of the largest offerings we've ever received written out to the abiding place ministry. Because they revival people. Revival people give lavishly, generously. <laughs> they don't hold back and wonder what you're going to do with it. I'm afraid you're not doing what I want you to do with it. Guess what? We're never going to do what you want us to do with it. Praise God. We're not going to be a dog on your chain to hunt with. Praise God. we the servants of the Lord. Doing what Papa commands. Amen. And but the beautiful thing of it is, as you sow into that and as you're faithful with those things, Father's there. He, he sees it, there's nothing that escapes his, his gaze. He's like looking. I'm not going to be able to use Clara. I hope I can. When is she just going to surrender everything to me? Where is she going to hold on to her own life? I really need somebody I can use down there. I really need somebody to go for me, somebody I can show my power through. Father, nothing is, he's looking for, he, we want, he loves, he's full of compassion. He loves the lost. He looks at you and me and he, and he, and he values the inheritance that he's just deposited on the inside of us. And he wants us to be able to see his inheritance in us. That which he's given, an heir of God, co-inherited with Christ Jesus. Where you're clutching your own little stuff. Don't do that anymore. You're robbing yourself. You're messing up the program. God's word works. His word is true. If there's anything that God says, prove me with, the only opportunity God gives you a opportunity to prove him with is your finances. Because it's so integrated with your heart. And nothing more represents your life than your finances. 
because you hold that as a means by which you preserve your life and there's absolutely nothing more important to you and valuable to you and to me than our own life. We hold it precious. Then there comes a place in a relationship with him where he, we recognize that he's in charge and we don't fear no more. It's like, you can't kill me till Papa's ready and I'm ready. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You might look and say, well, man, the martyr's crown's a hard thing to come by. But boy, you get, to, you get to joy in that for the rest of eternity. Hey, I got the martyr's crown. Would you like to come see it? It's over at the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. And every time he calls us to assembly, he calls us to dinner, we get to put on all of our crowns. Crown of righteousness, martyr's crown, crown of faithfulness, crown of glory. Ooh, my, my, my. What a, what, you know, multiple crowns. You ever seen a crown made of multiple crowns because they're king of kings? Ooh, my satire, my sheep, Man, I got myself something beautiful to cast at his feet. I'm going to, I'm not going to stand empty handed before him. Can, do you do that? We want to teach you basic etiquette. Bring a gift with you. And I see somebody says, we're going to have a gift for that house. We're going to gift. We're going to give to them. We're going to put, you bring a gift with you. Otherwise, you're just, you're just so empowered. You're so high on yourself that you just, they just, everybody should be just so blessed you showed up. That isn't the ways of the kingdom. That is not lowliness and meekness. That's not servitude. That's not a steaming everybody better than yourself. That's not walking in any form of humility, any kind of gratefulness. Huh? Are you with me? Come yes. on, people. Let's get ourselves into some Holy Ghost etiquette. Amen. Amen. Let's get ourselves into some divine protocol. I can't imagine. Can you imagine showing up before his presence, empty handed, nothing to get? Lord, sorry, I lived for myself. All I got to me. Is this good? Will this work? I didn't do anything for you, hardly. I've got no souls to show for it. Well, I'll make sure that none of you going to get that embarrassed. I don't want to sit there. Oh, no. Here comes my church. No. No, 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 no. 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 We're going to preach like this. We're going to run everybody off. That's not going to be fruitful. Just preach it in the word of God. We'll run you off. It's true. We'll wear you out, tire you out. Somebody says, no, I just don't believe that's love. It's love. It is love. It is love to confront you, to, to bring you to a place of behaving properly. That's what you did for your kids. Was that not love? Sure was. Teach them how to behave properly. God demands fruit. He demands it. There's a place where he says, look, I want the fruit and I want it now. Now. Cut it down. Why does it come birth the ground? Oh, Lord, patient. Give me just one more season with it. Let me work with it. One more season. Okay, one more season. I'm going to give you one more season with it. And he was talking about the nation of Israel. One more season still ultimately bore no fruit. So cut it down. He tells us, he said, if we abide in him, he said, oh, there's not a, when you've got somebody who's got a green thumb, so to speak, they just make it work, man. Father is the husbandman. Talk about a green thumb. Amen. Look around. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha. He is the gardener of gardeners. Husbandman of husbandmen. He's the husbandman, man. You, you've got to tell me, you've got to understand and reality that when you've got that kind of husbandman, you can't be the plant saying there, I wasn't being fed properly. I wasn't given the right kind of nutrients. I wasn't tended to properly. Otherwise, I'd be bearing fruit all over the place. I can only do as much as with, with what I've got. No, you've got the husbandman taking care of you. You've got the, you in the best vine. Can't say, I'm in a little, 
I'm on old crossbred, inbred vines. It's so messed up, it can't produce nothing. It's just old, you know, wild fruit. You in the best vine possible. Yeah. Best genetics possible. Yeah. Best, best, best of the best of the best. And so he demands fruit. He demands it. He said, if it's not there, you'll be cast from the vine. You will not be allowed to be a witness of this vine. I tremble over that. I personally tremble over that. I don't know how people can sit and be numb to that. God doesn't want you to be leather thick skin, leather skin. He wants you to be tender heart. Yes. Show me the people who give lavishly, who will also worship lavishly. Those are the tender hearted people. Those are the obedient ones. Those are the emptied ones. Those are the vessels submitted and surrendered to God. The most beautiful thing in creation. Amen. Your little bit of money, if you, bake, if, you, if you showed all of your head and gave it, it's going to be a, barely a blip on the monitor. Yeah. And about that, yeah. about seeing some people who step in to the living the life of God. Heard some men of God lamenting, saying, well, I, they just believe it was so close. They were just saying they believe it's so close to the end. We don't even have time to raise up people of faith. They are on such a slow track, we're just going to have to understand how to do it ourselves. Well, I understand what they meant, but I believe that's the wrong approach. It's demand. De put a demand upon people. God demands you. If you think a command is something less than a demand, then you, just, you miss the point. God is not giving you a divine suggestion if you get around to it. I got a divine suggestion for you. I don't blame you if you don't do it. Ain't none of that in the Bible. I demand it. You want what I've got? Then you must do this. Given us all, according to his divine power, given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Here we are, husband, he's the husbandman. We in the vineyard where he's the husbandman. We in the best vine. Hallelujah. Oh, my rapakaya. This is going to produce the best fruit on the branch. Praise God. I'm going to tell you right now, a branch is produced from the vine. It is genetically 100% exactly what the vine defines. And one cannot exist without the other. His ministry would not exist in the earth without you and me. We don't exist without him. And it's about, for, it's about time we come into the covenant and agreement. Stop holding on to our own lives. Yes. Go ahead and under, understand the joy and the beauty. When we give just a, just, we give barely anything. We can barely give anything in this thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. All we're giving is just us. That's barely nothing. <laughs> That's barely anything. That's barely anything. It's barely anything. Barely nothing is probably more expressive of what it should be. It's barely anything. Are you listening? Yes. I can say that it's less than, less than anything. What is it? What is man that God's mindful of us? The son of man that he visits. Why does he set his affections upon us? Why did he count our lives so dear to himself that he risked the universe to redeem us? People, let's, let us have a proper response to God. Let's have a proper response to the living God. Let's, let's taste reality. Let's stop drinking the Kool-Aid of the demonic. Let's stop living in the advertisements of worldliness and cultures of men. Let's with the total abandonment come follow him. Place each step where his word commands and not be a coward or afraid. It's easy not to have any fear when you've given yourself completely over to his sovereign will. Hallelujah. Just step it out with him. I no longer live. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But it's not me. When are we going to engage? When will we engage the covenant of the cross? When will we engage the covenant of the cross? When will we take hold of the covenant that was paid for us by such a high price by God himself? 
I'm crucified with Christ. I've heard many, every one of you, I've heard you say it. I'm crucified with Christ. I'm buried with him by baptism into his death. I'm alive, to get, I'm raised up together with him. I'm alive together with him. I'm seated in heavenly places together with him. You have no right to hang on to your own life or anything that you have to call anything that you have your own anymore. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You, you, every one of you. Yeah. Every one of you. Yeah. Quit cheating God. Don't lie to him. Say it like it is. Speak the truth. Even if the truth that you, of, of your life, what's real of your life, doesn't match with the Word of God. And then you got one or two choices. You're either going to repent or you're going to go on in your own way. At least you won't be deceiving yourself. You see what I'm telling you? Yep. Yes. If you deceive yourself and you walk in the ignorance of deception, there's nothing that can really be done for you. If I can help you understand by you being transparent and having to deal with what you're doing with your life, then suddenly I'll break you out of deception with the truth. You should know the truth and the truth breaks you out of deception. Amen. You should know the truth and the truth will set you free. In other words, break you out of deception. Break the yoke of a lie. Touch her right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Touch that baby right now. Healed, converted, blessed in Jesus' name. The Lord tells us, don't be lords over his heritage, but in examples of the flock. I'm not telling you, you go do it for me. I'm telling you, you come follow me. Amen. I'm not telling you, go do my work. I'm saying, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to stop just doing all your work. Are you listening? I'm telling you, you got to work too. I'm telling you, you got to throw in too. I'm telling you, it's costing your life too. You can't just sit around and say, praise God, you know, in the arenas of life. Look, pastor's giving his life for Jesus. Hallelujah. Now go home and live your own life. And you listen to me. Yes. You get in over here. You get over here too. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 And when the chief shepherd shall appear, I'm a shepherd, but he's chief shepherd. When the chief shepherd appears, I shall receive a crown of glory. Ha ha, I'm have me a crown of glory. Hallelujah. What you gonna have? What you laboring for? Because this is to the ministry. This is the people who's faithfully serving in the ministry. Where are you gonna get yours? <laughs> you better start doing some research. You better start doing yourself some research. Yeah, yeah. All concerned about laying up things here in this world, and you get there, you got nothing. Nothing. A little paper crown. <laughs> you got nothing. Say, I get a paper crown. He's got a golden crown. Well, you got all your, you got to go back down to the earth, all your treasure down there. And oops, got all burned up. <laughs> It is dissolved with a fervent heat. Sorry, you can't find it. It was only what was deposited over here in this realm. See, everything about our life, this ex is, we're spiritual beings. Everything about our life is a spiritual expression of some dimension of the spiritual world. And God's given the spirit and life of his word for you and I to be trained to walk out this glory realm that he himself exists in. And we make decisions coming and going and it has nothing to do with the mind of Christ or the mind of the Spirit or the Word of God. And to say that we live in our life for Him and wondering why this thing is languishing. Yeah. It's time for God's people to start moving. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time for people to start giving themselves to the work of the ministry. Yeah. Get yourself a crown and get yourself in line for a crown of glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whew. Hallelujah. Who a crown of righteousness. Hallelujah. <laughs> they that endure temptation, huh? Shall receive a crown of righteousness. Who my, 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 my. What is, how valuable is that to you? I'm telling you right now, that's talking about what you're going to live on for the rest of your life, not tell you what you're going to live on until you get crusty 80. Jesus. 
He was living for a while. How are they going to exist when they're 80? He probably won't even make 80 like that anyways. So bound up with your stress and concern and worry. Your fear explodes your heart before you get there. Huh? Or you're on gizmos and special instruments. Huh? Medical science. You're just basically propped up like, you know, a zombie. It's a Western zombieism. Huh? Got some kind of electronic mechanism making your heart go on another electronic mechanism. Got your liver going, another electronic mechanism. Got your brain going, another electronic mechanism. Got your lungs growing. Jesus. You give you said that the kingdom, Papa's going to refresh you, going to invigorate you. That you, I, I, I say, Lord, I, I mean, I'm constantly searching, Father, how can I give more? How can I lay hold on more? And then that context, He gives me divine help. He gives me divine strength. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I mean, I'm healthy. Praise Amen. God. Amen. I don't run through a troop. Hallelujah. I don't leap over a wall. The other day, we were out running with a bunch of young people and goes flying past them and hurdles right over it and everybody's just shocked because they see they're out again so stiff they can't get over. We walk in divine blessings. We walk in divine grace. We, we walk in over this place and pouring out our life as, a, as an offering, as a sacrifice upon the altar of God. What a wonderful realm where you begin to build an altar, hallelujah, of your life and you begin to be a living sacrifice and all it's about is how can I do more in the kingdom? How can I give more? How can I, how, how can I lay down my life more? Oh God, how can it be revealed through my life in a greater dimension? There ain't even no note of revelation of God in a greater dimension when you hold it on your own life. Just get it right. Get your notes out right now. Write yourself a note and then put it up on your, you know, whatever it is that you look at yourself in. <laughs> Some people got a mirror in every room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Put it up there. Watch it profit you. You're not going to live the life of Jesus until you lose yours. When you do, when you begin to live his life, it becomes it's just such a refreshing, wonderful, beautiful, bountiful realm. I'm so captivated by the miracle realm of Jesus. I'm also captivated by the love realm of Jesus, the compassion realm of Jesus. I so want the world to stop seeing a misrepresentation of who he is. And that's not going to happen until people stop living their own lives. And people are not going to stop living their own lives until they stop serving mammon. Because you cannot serve God and mammon, God and your own self-interest, God and all the other things that are important to you in your everyday life. You cannot. The Lord says to us, likewise, and he says, He's done with the elders. He's done with the elders, the leaders, the ministers. He's done with them. He says, likewise now, you younger, those of you who are now connecting with the things of the church, you've been brought into the body of Christ, you're the planting of the Lord, you're the branch in the vine. Now, you, likewise, you younger, Submit yourself unto the elder. Submit, serve them, finance them, resource them, imitate them, learn from them. These are the laws of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Yeah, every one of you, be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Here is, the, here is the body of Christ functioning. Here is a love relationship, a display of the spirit of the living God going on, the connection, hallelujah, that has to be made because God resists the proud. He resists them. He doesn't have a relationship with them. He doesn't know them. He doesn't have a relationship with them. The psalmist says, basically, the same verse scripture, he says, God knows of the proud are far off, but gives grace to the humble. In other words, 
There is no race relationship. There's no intimacy. It's the same way as he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, you lawless ones, you who have not obeyed me. And that's the context. You've not obeyed me. You've not done what the simple things I've asked you to do. I do not know you. And he's not saying I, I don't consciously, I'm not consciously aware of you. I don't know you. I don't fellowship with you. I have no relationship with you. That's a terrible thing. You and I have been born of, of, of the Spirit, washed in the blood, yeah. huh? Yes. Filled with the goodness of God yeah. to get to have relationship. It should be the most important thing to us. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how much does it cost? <laughs> how much does it cost? We were singing tonight, we sang this morning, in to your presence, I commit my soul. Like into your hands, I commend my spirit unto you, O God. That last breath that is going out, I have no more control anymore. Into your hands, I commit my spirit. Amen. What a place to live. Yeah. Into your presence, I commit my soul. Into your presence, into your glory, I commit my soul. Into your presence, I consecrate my life. Not half of it, all of it, because there's nothing about my stinky self that I would like to hang on to. There's nothing about my, I am not impressed with one part of my being. I am captivated by him, though. Amen. That I get to live his life, that I get to walk in his splendor, that I get to have the privilege of having the mind of the Spirit, the mind of Christ, the authority of his word. Captivates my intention, captivates my affections all day long. The miraculous realm where God is displayed. So many people right now in this world need to see Jesus. They need, they need, they're hungry, they need to see some token, some witness of the power of God. Somebody says, I don't want to ask God anything because I don't want to be disappointed. I'm not going to expect anything from God, and that way I'll never be disappointed in Him. The theology of the church. The world around us is in crisis. I'm saying, Father, what does it take for you to be able to come and move in the midst of the abiding place? as you move in your power, as you are seen when you are given freedom and free course among a people. So that this earth could once again, it wouldn't take too many, it wouldn't take too many notable miracles. It wouldn't take too much of a constant lavish display of his love, where all of a sudden the meetings begin to go on every night and people press in until they get healed. People press into that love realm till the miracles begin to work because miracles take place in a love realm they don't take a place in a criticism realm. They don't take a place in your sorrow and sadness realm because you didn't get your went went way for your self-interest. It didn't work out like you planned. You're all frustrated about your decisions for your life. Get off that monkey go round. Get out of that monkey trap. Get out of that unholy life. Who's told him total abandonment serve him? Well, all that stuff doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Spirit of the Lord may have free course upon among us and the Lord Jesus Christ may begin to be revealed in such a way that we're, it's not just a few miracles here and there that we've got to sneak up behind people and we've got to get them before they think they know who we are. <laughs> and it's true. We get into their life before criticism begins to work and we say in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed, and they're healed. It's beautiful. We get into people's lives, sometimes we get into people's lives and we can immediately see they need, they need to be healed, but they just run their pastor to the ground. They've lived in strife. They've spoken against the anointing. They've tried to steady and balance the ark. You gotta get right with God. You gotta go repent. You're not gonna get healed till you repent. 
so much violence and spiritual violation in the church that stops the flow of the Holy Ghost and the beautiful expression of the life of Jesus. Don't you want to be a part of that? Will you sit idly by and allow yourself to ruin it all? To ruin it all? Such a high price to pay to live for yourself. Such a high price to pay to live for yourself. Such a great loss of riches and honor and glory to hold on to your own life. So sad. Ignorance is so sad. It's so cruel. It's, it's oppressiveness upon humanity. Look in your Bibles in John chapter 13. I don't know that there is a greater expression of how to step into the things that Father wants to be displayed in our life. than to be committed to do this ministry of Jesus as it's described here in these few verses of scripture. You know, I believe if people would just take Matthew 5, Matthew 7, Matthew 5, 6 and 7, one of Jesus' great monologues and begin to live that, you begin to understand your total need and dependence upon the Holy Ghost because you're not being able to do any of that without him. And then you take the greatest monologue, John 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and you give yourself to living this? My goodness. We would, have, we would immediately come into a place of functioning in his loneliness, in his, in his meekness, in his, in his humility, in his brokenness, in the manner and display of his love and his life that would absolutely transform the world around us. You begin to live as a servant. You begin to live as a slave for the Lord Jesus Christ. Your whole, everything that you have, all your resources, all of your influence is at his disposal. Every money, every penny you make is about seeing the kingdom of God advance, about pouring it into the ministry. It has nothing to do with you anymore. Because right now, if the Lord was to give somebody who is not faithful with unrighteous mammon his riches, they would make a shame and a reproach out of it. What they would do is they would become puffed up by it and they would destroy their soul and everybody else they touched. Oh, people don't believe it. It's just like everybody says that money's, so that wealth isn't going to change you. No, wealth will change you. A billion dollars will change you. You can say all you want, how about wealth's not going to change you, it's going to change you. It change you. If, 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 you do not, if you do not understand how to walk in humility and brokenness, the riches will absolutely ruin you and destroy you. You will become so puffed up, so high-minded, so egotistic, so iconoclastic. It will be everything about you. It's true. And so the kingdom and the glory of the kingdom is withheld. And people have to go on without a true witness. Look around tonight at all the empty chairs. Is that God's fault? Oh God, you lazy. Oh God, you really are coming up short on your promises. Look at all the empty chairs. Look around. Those empty chairs are your fault. It's true, it's your fault. It's your unwillingness to serve God. It's your unwillingness to lay down your life for God. He goes, I'm telling you right now, there are thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people in San Diego that would fill those chairs. Absolutely. There are so many people. It, once again, I'll say once again, listen to me. People aren't going to come to church unless you go pick them up. You need to make your car a divine, a, a, a divine tax to cab to heaven. Tax to cab to heaven. If every church in the United States of America would simply have as their mission to go and give people a ride to church, huh? That have no transportation, the churches would be jam-packed and be building programs all over the place. It's true. Don't sit there and look at me like that. Get busy. Get your, get your, get, get your tail lit on fire and start moving. Hallelujah.
people baptized in the Holy Ghost are moving. People baptized in the Holy Ghost and obeying God are moving. People that are baptized in the Holy Ghost and doing it their own way are hard to get moving. You never know what you got to work with. God never knows what he has to work with. I don't know if I have anybody to work with. They all, my word to them are just divine suggestions. Look around. Put, take a responsibility upon your shoulders for the things of the kingdom. Look around. Take a divine responsibility for souls waking up in hell tomorrow morning. Look around. Let God give you something beyond your self-interest and your own concern and how do you can boister your own whatever. And start laying all of that down and just go after this wonderful, blessed prize that Father has set before us. And reach the end and say, Lord, I want your glory to be revealed through yes. me. Yes. <laughs> Start telling people that you're going to pick them up and take them to lunch after the meeting. Your car will be filled every Sunday. Yes. That's going to cost you. You're going to have to get out of bed earlier. You're going to have to do a lot of preparation. You're going to have to pour into people's lives. You're going to have to put up with their stuff. Welcome to ministry. <laughs> and just think about how others have been putting up with your stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. What, you think you're a grand prize? <laughs> you the grand prize to ministry? Huh? We're all supposed to be blessed because you showed up? <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> We going to be blessed when Jesus shows up. Yeah. We bless, we blessed when the Holy Ghost gets to take control of this program. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We blessed when you show up with a smile even. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Just happy with a happy disposition. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Mangalaya satapora naya pitaliya ho. Nanakia namakasi kapora tikanaya. With a bevrenaya. With a little bona, with just a little bit of expression in heaven takes it to a whole nother level. I mean, I would just love to just stand around here in this place with you and be a part of the body of Christ as everybody prophesies. As everybody flows in the anointing of the Holy Ghost, as the expressions of divine power and grace, as thunderous praise has come forth from your belly, as words of knowledge sing out of your spirit. Hmm. Mine. And with every utterance that this, the, it goes to another level. My, 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 the place to fill up. I'm telling you right now, you show me where the body of Christ is functioning, and I'm going to show you where a place is going to fill up. I'm gonna, listen, there is a, it's high time people come on. Give me a break. Quit living for yourself. Start living for the kingdom of God. Come on, just to understand on very practical levels. <laughs> If I can get rid of your excuses tonight, we could actually start engaging with God and moving into the harvest. Hmm. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the living God. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord Jesus, he says to the disciples, he says, sit down here, I'm going to wash your feet. And Peter says, there's no way you're going to wash my feet. Jesus says, well, if I don't wash your feet, then you have no part with me. Of course, Peter goes and says, swing the pendulum, you know, and he's got to say, no, no, don't just wash my feet, wash my head, my hands too. And the Lord says, he that has his feet washed needeth nothing more. It's enough. Jesus says... Are you looking there with me? Jesus says, right now you don't understand what I'm doing. Jesus is taking the place of the lowest of servants to serve, not by constraint, not because he has to, not because he's getting paid for it, but out of a depth of love and consecration to the needs of his church. He's saying, what I'm you see this? He says, what I'm doing for you now. You won't, you don't understand, but later you'll see it. Do you see that? Is everybody looking at that verse scripture? Yes. Everybody looking at that? Yes. Everybody see that? Yes. Does anybody in here understand? Is anybody here in the later? Is anybody in here in the later? 
in other words, is anybody here in the later? You understand, you don't understand it now, but later you will. Is anybody here in the later? Two, three, four, five people in the later. Well, what are the rest of you then? Nirvana? <laughs> Testing, one, two. Is there anybody who is in the later? You understand the later. You're in the later. Is anybody in the later? Are you in the later? What I say do now, you will not understand it, but later you will. Are you looking there, verse scripture? Are you in the later? <laughs> Praise God. Boy, that was tough. That should have been easy. That should have been easy. If you're in the later, if you're not in the later, you're not even in. Because he's talking about when the Holy Ghost comes. This is all. John 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is really all about the Holy Ghost coming. He's wrapping up his ministry. He's showing them how to function in the anointing, how to function in his ministry. He's saying, look, at this is how my ministry works. You guys want to know how the anointing works. You guys are interested in how the power of God moves into place when all I'm doing is praying. All I'm doing is praying. All I'm doing is just talking a little bit and, and the blind begin to see and the deaf begin to hear and the cripple begin to walk. All I do is speak and call it forth and the dead are raised to life again. This is how the anointing works. Look, you're not going to just be able to sit around and watch, be spectators and watch me do it. And I've got to basically, you know, you know, twist your arm around behind your back and get you to go out and do something because you're so afraid and intimidated. Are you listening to me? A little paraphrase there, but pretty much captures it. Are you listening to me? Yes. Jesus said, Jesus said, God's telling us, come and imitate. Jesus tells us to imitate him. God's telling us to imitate him, to walk in his love. He's placing his love, the love that died for us at Calvary's cross, the love, the love that, that, that was moved with compassion upon the multitudes and healed all that were diseased and all that were sick, all that were maimed and all that were afflicted and all that were tormented. He said, this is how my anointing works. This is it. This place of being willing to be the lowest, being willing to not have this place of where you've got to have all this needy stuff of being pat on the back and to everybody telling them that you're doing a good job and that they love you and you're okay, you'll be all right. Like your mental case or something. They're trying to calm you down because you're just freaking out. Are you hearing me? Yes. A complete total surrender of your life over to a realm of great boldness and confidence because you no longer live. You live only for the purpose of the Father. I'm not living Jesus in my own life. It's the Father's life that is being expressed through me. Amen. He's called you and I to come to a place where it's His life that's being expressed through us. Oh God, that you may hear. Amen. So He said, come. Yes. I want to teach you about meekness and loneliness. Amen. I want to show you how all these things that you can't even begin to imagine how they work, how it's just a flow. Because people can't even imagine how First, how First Peter chapter 5 works. They can't even get that. Because it's a place of consecration to the realms of the Holy Spirit where you and I are willing to be taught something that goes absolute opposite to our culture, to the way that we've lived, the way we've been screaming and hollering since we were born and placing demands for everybody to give us attention on the level that we expect to have it. Oh my. At some juncture, we got to grow out of that. In Jabodacita. In an Amanastik Leopokaya. In Jesus Lemonfasina. By the Spirit of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, the power of God is here to give us the ability. But you, got, you and I got to be willing to be broken. Yeah. You got to be willing to be broken. You're not going to be broken until you're needy. You're not going to be broken until you're needy. And the spirit of needy is here. He's poured out the spirit of needy. He's poured out the spirit of intercession. He's poured out the spirit of pleadings, supplication. In other words, he's poured out the spirit of needy. He's poured out the spirit of hunger. He's poured out the spirit of thirsting where people aren't just sitting around going, It's the church. It's the church. Amen. That's right, Pastor. You didn't know whether they said Pastor or Pastor. You're not sure, but Amen. And there's no doing it. There's no deed in it. I've watched this go down all my life. I've watched it happen all my life. I've watched it happen to many of you. This loveliness, this meekness, this, this wonderful realm 
a brokenness and humility. The meekness, the neediness, listen to me, the meekness, the lowliness is not ever going to come in our life without the brokenness and neediness. I'm going to say it again. The lowliness and meekness that it demands, God demands our spirit to be trained in it. If we are going to be able to function in the ministry and life of God where his glory is being manifested the way he wants to manifest it in the realms of the, of the miraculous, whether it's love or the demonstration of his power and signs and wonders, the lowliness and meekness is never going to be expressed until there's neediness and brokenness. Yeah. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. But praise God, he's poured out the spirit of neediness and brokenness. He's poured out the spirit of pleading and supplications. It's, but, but will we go with it? Because I'm, it's going, if you are going to give yourself to your own self-interest, you're never going to be able to be sensitive to what God the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Son, is crying out on the inside of you, wanting you to be, wanting you to understand, wanting to you move in. You're always going to be self-defenses. It's always going to be about you. You're always going to be, it's just pride. It's high-mindedness. It's arrogance. It's the way of the demonic. It's the way of darkness. Everybody's got to, you know, I know him. But the Lord says, no, 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 no. Listen, as, as I read to you this morning, I write unto you that you sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, who is the propitiation for our sin, not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. What a, what a beautiful blessing. What a mercy. What a grace. Yeah. Huh? By his obedience, his obedience abounds unto many offenses. So that there's a mercy there, there's a forgiveness there to where we're not forever lost. If we sin, if we rebel, if we disobey, there's a means for us to be forgiven. But he says, hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that says he knows him and doesn't keep his commandments, liar, truth not in him. That's what the scripture says. There's always the evidence. And people don't tremble. And we need to tremble. When the Spirit of the Lord begins to move in your heart, you'll tremble. If you're not trembling, you need to be crying out for God and say, God, say, God, why am I so hard against you? Why is it that I am alienated from you? Why is it that I cannot respond to your movings? Why is it that all I have is a head to listen to and no heart to respond? Think about it. Why is it, God, that I have a head to listen and always filtering through and always having to deal with all this stuff? Offense, blessed, offense, blessed, offense, blessed, agree, disagree, offense, blessed, offense, head. Yeah. Human reasoning, trying to lay hold of God out of, human, out of the human realm yeah. and no heart to respond. I know what God's doing. God's pleading with the people to cooperate with him. And he's asking you, will you be that? Yes. And he's saying, it's so you have to totally radically change. And it's going to begin with your money. Amen. And many people are going to be just like this rich man. Many are called and few are chosen. Many are going to be just like the rich men. They're going to go away sad having a little bit of money. At least the rich man had a great abundance. Rich man? I mean, you know, what is a rich man? He's a multi-millionaire, multi-billionaire. I don't know how much money he has. A great abundance. He had a lot. Here's a lot of people that got just a little. And they won't let go of their little. Ebenezer. <laughs> Praise God, Ebenezer had Christmas. <laughs> and when you have Christmas, guess what happens? When you have an encounter, guess what happens? You become the biggest giver. Even they even got that in the Catholic movement, in Ebenezer Scrooge theology. <laughs> they even understand this divine principle that many Christians look cross-eyed at us when we start trying to express to them that we're not really interested in your money because it's really not going to make that big of a difference. Huh? At most, it would be one crusade. And that ain't going to do it. Because we've already got like, you know, we've right now, I got right now a dozen on my hit list. Are you listening to me? Yes, yes. Right now, there's, right now, there's literally millions of orphans that can be saved. Millions of children that can be saved. All they need is someone to go out there, rescue them, pull them off the street. And you don't have to, you don't even have to go, out, go outside of the city. You don't even, right across the border. 
And even it just keeps multiplying as you get further south to Rio de Janeiro, get into Brazil where they're having the Olympics right now. There's kids, street kids all over the place. They're just all over. They were born of prostitutes. They're just all over. They just everywhere. You need to go gather them. If you don't know what else to do, why don't you go do that? Why don't you sell your house and your car and all that you have and take it and go do that? You're going to run out of money pretty quick, too. And so if you haven't developed faith, poor you. Because you're going to sit around with a bunch of starving, hungry kids looking at you, saying, where's the food that was promised? Hello. Am I bra and I'm, am I, have I painted you in a corner yet? Yeah. Are you still holding on your life? <laughs> I'm not letting go. I want Jesus, but I'm not letting go. I'm on Jesus, but I'm not letting go. I'm holding on to my life. I'm hanging on to my life. I'm sure that God appreciates me hanging on to my life. I know God wants me to have a nice house. I'm sure that God wants me to drive a nice car. I'm sure that he wants me to get a new pair of shoes. I'm sure that he wants me to get a new toy. A bigger boat. I'm sure. Because he likes to see me fishing. I'm sure that he goes fishing. He's a fisherman. He likes to see me fishing. And the preacher wants me to give in the offering and, and, and I've got to have a new surfboard because mine one, mine's got ding in it. And people are looking at me strange because it's a weird color. It's out of fashion. You know, he's trying to get my surfboard money. We were planning a vacation. He's trying to get that. No, we're going for something much bigger. We're trying to get you. God's trying to get you. God's trying to break the yoke off of you, the bondage off of you, the, the, the power of tyranny off of you that keeps you from living in joy unspeakable and full of glory, that keeps you from walking in the mind of the Spirit, that keeps you from living the life that's so divine, so abundantly, that keeps you from bearing forth the fruit so that God can bring forth, prune you, hallelujah, cut you back, perfect you to bring forth even bigger fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. That whatever you ask him, because a relationship begins to blossom, that whatever you ask, he does it. Amen. Mm. Yes. I asked the Lord for this building. I asked, the Lord, I, I, I drove by the Lord. I'm going to tell you, I, mean, I haven't told anybody this. But really, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if you wanted me to stay in San Diego, give me that building. I haven't told anybody that. I just said, I just whispered, Lord, if you want, if you would just give me that building. Remember, I've said that, right? I didn't tell you the whole story. No. I said, Lord, if you want me to stay in San Diego, give me that building. Give me that property. Within a week, we had the property. After years of trying to get in. And I'm asking the Lord for a harvest. And I've been asking the Lord for the harvest. And he tells me over and again, no, the people have got to do it. The people have got to do it. You've got to preach. You've got to command the people to do it. You've got to command them to labor, to continue to go after it, to continue to press in, to con continue to go through the process. The process is essential because if you labor and you press in and you lay down your life, at the end of the process, you're going to be changed and you're going to be worthy of the harvest. You're going to be an example. You're not going to be all stuck on yourself. Expe in, you know, somehow being empowered. It's just expecting. It's, you know, you have a right. You'll be broken. There's going to be love in your life. Instead of control and possessiveness, this is my territory. <laughs> my territory. My territory. Mine. My office. My room. My platform. My instrument. My spot. My spot. I could do some other gestures, but I'm going to let it go. Territory. Mine. Bob is not going to be revealed in that, man. Right. He's not going to be. <laughs> My stuff. It's exactly what you'll do with God's heritage, God's people, God's things. Tell you learn how to be broken. Brokenness is obvious. It's a tenderness towards heaven. It's a tenderness. Hallelujah. It's a tenderness towards heaven. A responsiveness towards the Holy Spirit. A neediness that places a demand on those things which He has commanded. Huh? 
I was ministering the other night in a place and I said, you must demand what God has commanded. And when I was saying it, I just passionately saying it, I said this the Spirit, the Lord said, they don't understand what you're saying. And I just thought for a minute and I said, you have to demand of yourself to do what God has commanded. Because people hear it like, you got to demand God. And you know, there's some places where that, you know, fits like in, in Mark chapter, I'm forgive me, Luke chapter 11. But what really comes down to, you got to demand of yourself what God has commanded. Hallelujah. 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 It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you your Saturdays. It's going to cost you your, your evenings. I mean, aren't you ready for church every night? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Come on, man. I just praise God. Hey, that's revival language. That's the move of God. That's what Papa gets excited about. Stay in the meeting till after midnight every night. Amen. And it ain't about whether or not you've got to go to work or school. Yeah. And now you're not making God dance to your program. Right. Yeah. God's got to perform based on your program. You're only going to go with God if it meets your conditions and it, it suits those things of your own interests. Because that's, that's the way it's been. By and large, for most of the church, it's been that way. It's true. It's sad. It's true. Bob is looking for people. I believe with all of my heart that we are on that place, that point that of, of God's speaking on his own behalf. As it were, the Lord girding his sword upon his side and coming to glorify his son. Because he's not going to allow it to just go on. But he's going to have, he's got to have somebody. And if he's only got one or two or three this time around, he just use one, two, three. That's all be used. And people will flock to see the one, the two, or three. And that's it. And then everybody be in the meeting and say, was well, there any place, is there, do you know of a place that we could go to church where there's this kind of move of God? And I have to say, no, sorry. Don't. Church doesn't want to have this move of God. They're stuck on themselves. They're too busy with their own things, living their own lives, tending their own business. They're too entrapped with the culture of the United States of America. Sorry, uh, the next meeting will be about 100 miles from here. Come next month. That's the way it's happened in the past. That's what's happened in the past. What if Father has a church? There's been churches. My mother was in a church in Chattanooga, Tennessee, R.C. Cook's church, biggest Pentecostal church in the United States of America at the time. They judged the meeting based upon the visibility because of the glory cloud of heaven. What a way to be raised where you had matured saints, people who poured out their life in the kingdom of God, people come off the mission field, people who labor continually. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to the setting sun. Instead of let us labor for the master on Saturday from 12 to 1. It makes a big difference. <laughs> I mean, I grew up hearing the stories about how Everybody would join in with the heavenly choir. There wasn't a conductor on the, there wasn't a conductor, a musician that was leading the song. It was the, the, the there were musicians that were sensitive to the music. They would hear the heavenly choir, they hear the heavenly sound, they would all begin to sing the song right out of heaven. Signs and wonders and miracles. People flocked and they couldn't get them in the building. They lined up out the out on the on the on the lawn. Just getting near the place, the touch of God was there. Power, the power of God for miracles, signs, and wonders. So, can it happen again? Yes. yes. That's all I'm talking. That's all I'm talking about here. Yes. I'm not talking about anything else. That's it. I'm just telling you the practical reality of what hinders. Yes. I mean that God's backed off. I'm not doing it right now. I'm just tired. He's not backed off. He's waiting for some people to cooperate with him. And he lays out for us the spiritual laws and he goes right to the heart of it. He says, where your treasure is, there's where your heart would be. Also, who can trust you with the true riches when you can't be trusted with unrighteous mammon? And your money needs to become to you unrighteous mammon. Yes. 
I know a better way to say it. That's a good translation. I've wrestled with that, thought about, well, how is, we could say unrighteous mammon, but, I mean, unrighteous money, but mammon just says it better. Like a woolly mammon. <laughs> An unrighteous woolly mammon with giant weird tusk. Papa's just wanting to use us. <laughs> he changed it so he could bless us. He blessed us so he could empower us, so he could show what it means to be redeemed, to shine bright with the glory of redemption so that the lost and dying world sees it and goes, wow, how can I have some of that too? Amen. Amen. That's a good come on right there. Hallelujah. You bring it, man. I'm going to tell you right now, you just stay right there. Don't you move. You behave yourself like a Holy Ghost, man. Somebody just in the program, bringing it down, calling it out. Hallelujah. Drawing off the anointing. I got to have these things. Hallelujah. Jesus said, this is how the anointing works. This is how the signs and wonders work. Come learn of me. I'm meek and lowly. You should find rest in your soul. Many people are troubled. They're not at rest. Because they want to walk out their own life. They want to live in their own strength. The arm of flesh cannot please men. To trust in the arm of flesh cannot please men. Those that are in the flesh cannot please men. Cannot please God. Father, forgive me. The arm of flesh cannot please God. Those who trust in the arm of flesh cannot please God. Those that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you and I are supposed to be in the Holy Ghost, which means brokenness, meekness, neediness, lowliness, humility, the very life that was a wellspring from the divine love of the Father that is placed in us by the, poured into us by the Holy Ghost. Father doesn't just come shove his way in, push you out and display these things. You've got to want these things. You've got to cooperate with these things. You got to learn how to be a servant. You got to learn how to serve, serve the church, serve the ministry serve the anointing. There is no other way to you, for you to express you serving Jesus Christ and you serving the kingdom. There is no other way. Amen. And how you serve this church is how you serve Jesus Christ. True. And how you serve the anointing and the ministry in this place is how you serve Jesus Christ. There is no other practical application. There is no practical application nor expression outside of that. And it's about time people deal with reality. Stop quit playing imaginary games with God. Recognize the responsibilities upon your shoulders as a member, as, a, as one who's been endowed with the privilege and the honor to be a member in the body of Christ, bone of his bone, joint of his joint. Hallelujah. Blood of his blood. Hallelujah. Flesh of his flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bacchanania. And join together in every way. This is what it means to be in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit, to say, okay, Lord, I see in your word exactly how I'm supposed to behave myself, that your glory may be made manifest. And then the Holy Spirit's right there to empower us to do it. But yet many people go on in their own self-interest, in their own attitudes. Your attitude is expression of your spirit having abdicated obedience to God the Holy Ghost. Your spirit expressing anything but the ways of God is a defiance against the power of the Holy Ghost who's supposed to be ruling your spirit, who your spirit is supposed to be joined unto. Who you came into in a place of, of commitment and, and, and servitude to and vowed to only express what he's expressing. And God in his love and his mercy just keeps calling out, keeps reaching out, keeps preaching keeps ministering, yes. keeps reproving. Yes. 
Are the disobedient supposed to be praised? Are those who continue to err and do wrong supposed to be accommodated? No, you're supposed to be rebuked and reproved. Why? So that Christ Jesus can be revealed. So that the kingdom of God can be made known. So that there's not false witness, but there's be truth bearers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bravo, Sade Karina Masatea. Understand what the Lord said. And commit to it. What he said, take no thought for what you shall eat yes. when it's offering time. Because there's no more practical place than when it's offering time. And he's really talking about the offering time, isn't he? He truly is. He's kind of talking about the treasure. Yeah, he is. Don't bring into calculation how you're going to be clothed, how you're going to pay your bills. It's not part of the calculation. Because he's talking fundamentally about how we're going to seek him. Once again, that neediness and that brokenness that, that has to have what he supplies, his kingdom, his righteousness, the life that he's given, the very life of God that you and I are supposed to be expressing as heirs and co-inheritors with Jesus, both now in this life and in the life to come that we are laboring. We are not a part of this culture. We are not a part of this earthly kingdom that we're citizens of heaven. We seek a kingdom whose builder and maker is God. We in that realm right now. And we live out, we live that out in a very practical sense. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Imitating Jesus, imitating God, walking in the footsteps of the master, following him, being saying, you know, I really am a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and a witness of the resurrection. I live the life of Jesus. I live his life in his ministry. I'm in his life, in his ministry. I'm his disciple. I've taken up my cross and I deny myself. I don't do anything of myself anymore. Not of myself, for myself. I'm interested, too busy, too excited. I'm too excited about doing it for Jesus. Too excited about doing it for the kingdom. It's just a real letdown for the self. Mm. Hallelujah. And I pray that you'll be able to understand what I just said. You're going to have to get yourself into the ministry. You're going to have to get yourself way out there in responsibility to God. You want to grow in faith in the miraculous? Get yourself so committed to the kingdom of God that without a miracle, you won't survive. Don't want faith in miracles now? Because I just presented the cross. I said, I just presented the cross with the sound of cost. I just presented the cross. You hear me? Yes. Can you hear the overtones of cost? Yes. Huh? That's, that's that tonality that's just above that. You've got to have a trained ear to hear it. It's the overtone that the trained musician's ear, the trained ear of the spirit can hear. Can you hear me? Yes. Praise God for those of you who said yes. Shame on you for those of you who sat there with your mouth shut. Just shame on you. You lousy representation of the kingdom of God. Shame on you. Stopped up by demon spirits. Shame on you. Open your mouth and get moving with God or get out the way. Yes. There's too many places, too many things for God's servants to go and do than to try to stand around and babysit people who do not want to move forward in the kingdom of God. Get in or get out. Because no, no lukewarmers are allowed. There's that offensive thing again. Can't you see it? Feel all beaten up and beaten down. You ought to slap yourself around a little bit. Maybe that'll help. Because all it is is a display of hanging on to yourself. Because brokenness, they hit the dust. Brokenness would be obedient. Serving the anointing, you hit the dust and say, God, forgive me, I'm sorry. I need to open my mouth. I shouldn't sit here. You're right, shame on me. 
Not, oh, I'm being abused. Oh, I just feel so threatened now. I, I, just, feel so, I just feel like I'm so unappreciated. Exactly. That's what we're trying to deal with right there. We try to get that out of the way. You stop living for yourself and start living for Jesus. Amen. Get your mouth open. Begin to participate with what God says. Hey, I'm going to do this. I want this in my life for Jesus. God, forgive me. You know, as the Spirit of the Lord goes forth and speaks, if you won't sit in silent, but you go ahead and agree with him, what was going to happen is there's going to begin to be cries out of your spirit. If your spirit is stopped up, you can't say nothing. There's not a response to the heart. You know, I'd rather have an empty head and a full heart than a full head and an empty heart. I'd rather be a dead head with a live heart than a live head with a dead heart. To respond to the Spirit of the Lord. You need to get a sign for your car. Taxi cab to heaven. And come tell me, come report, say, yeah, Pastor, listen, you know, I had some people committed, come get in the car. I thought the car was full. We got there. They didn't get in. We blew the horn. We banged on the door. We banged on the window. No one came out. We knew they were in there. We just had to leave them alone. That's why our car is empty. Sorry. And we'll pray for you and believe God have a greater expression of the divine love and power through your life to where people can't resist you. I'll tell you right now, you grab a hold of some babies, you grab a hold of some children, you grab a hold of some people, some even old people, any people, <laughs> you get them healed and touched by the power of God, they'll come to church with you. Huh? You begin to pour into them love instead of your own self-interest. I'm going to tell you right now, they'll come to church with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You begin to develop relationships and f with people. They'll come to church with you and pour love into them, pour interest into them. Begin to wash the feet. Yes. Any man, anybody wash my feet lately? Yeah. I'm talking about stinky feet, dirty feet, feet that have been on the trail, huh? not on pavement, but on dirt. I'm talking about feet stained with dirt in the pores, in the crevices. Huh? Toe jam like a quarter inch thick. <laughs> Dirt so stopped up inside those toenails you could never get it out. Washing feet. Talking about the foot washing situation where after the first foot, not the first set of feet, but the first foot, the picture is black dirt. <laughs> Black. Dude. He says, you understand what I'm doing now, but you will later when you receive the Holy Ghost. When you step into this flow of heaven. When you're seized by the life of God. When you got the Holy Spirit to teach you the way that the wind moves. The way that the glory flows. The way that the river of God functions. Hallelujah. Let me just tell you something, people. When a church is full of Christians, who are supposed to be moving somewhere with God and they're not, we have to spend our time like this. I'd much rather minister to a church full of people who don't really know any better or who are lost. So please get out the way. Please. There are so many churches to go to and just be happy with your little giving. And they will be impressed with whatever it is you do for a career. 
And so happy to have you sit and occupy a chair. I'm not that way, and this is not that church. I would much, be, I'd much rather be ministering to the lost and to the hungry. Just to be able to lay out the word of you here to strengthen you, love you, heal you, feel you, bless you, change you. Hallelujah. Come to Calvary's cross for a cleansing. Huh? And all I have to work with tonight is you. That's it. And you better be giving it all. After having to go through this. You better not hold back anything. Hallelujah. You better surrender yourself to God because his judgment's about to fall. You're about to find out there's something going on much bigger than the opinions of men, much bigger than the classifications of what you believe or don't believe. The reality of heaven and the judgment seat of Christ Jesus is about to be revealed. The gavel's about to come down. And it isn't going to look any different than his word. I promise you that. And that's all we give into you, his word. So we're laying out before you his word. Come on, church. Yes. Father's looking for someone to express his glory through. Yes. You, better, you better find yourself a place of prayer. Yes. You better find yourself a place of breaking through. Yes. You better find yourself a total place of abandonment through your giving because it ain't going to even begin till it starts right there because Jesus Christ said so. Because God said so. The author of this life, yes. the author of this anointing yes. said so. It ain't going to even happen until yes. you let go. Quit hanging on to your own life. It ain't even going to begin. Yeah. All we're going to have is more repetitious meetings like this. Yeah. 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 Pleading with God's people to surrender to him. Yeah. Come on, people. It's just time to go ahead and, yeah. you know, Amen. commit your soul to the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I pray tonight that there's not a person in this place that believes that I'm asking you on behalf of God to give half of yourself. I pray that there's not a person in this place tonight that believes that somehow I'm telling you that you can't serve God unless you're on the mission field because I'm telling you you can serve God full time in any field. I pray tonight that there's nobody on this place that believes that I'm saying that somehow, no matter where you're serving God, that you can serve him with 90%. I hope everybody understands very clearly that we're talking about a transformed life where you say, I'm not living my own life anymore. I'm living the one he gave. I'm not holding on to my own self anymore. Hallelujah. I'm going to learn, I'm going to learn perfect obedience to him. Hallelujah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give myself over at every point of testing. I'm going to give myself over to a declaration that I trust you, God, with total abandonment. I'm not going to wait till after I breathe out my last breath and find out how much I trust God. I'm not going to wait and find out after I, that's all over whether or not I really served him the way he wanted. I'm going to go all the way with him now because I'm too, I, 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 I am too much. In fear of an eternity without God. I'm going to have him. I'm not going to run no risk. I'm going to play no. How close can I get and miss hell? How close to hell can I get and miss it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're believing right now that this book that we're just now finishing up, just, just finishing up the editing on, I'm believing that with all of my heart, I'm just hooked up in faith that will, it will not only reach hundreds of thousands of people, but it's going to bring in huge resources to fund many of the crusades. I'm not gonna, I mean, I'm, look, I'm not gonna believe to do it all because I don't wanna leave people out. I mean, I'm gonna believe that you'll go ahead and you'll begin to connect through your giving, through sowing into these things, through your submission, your surrender, because you've just given yourself over to the servitude, the love and the life of God so that you yourself go do them. Because right now we got too many crusades on the dock and I can't be over every, every place at once. Now I was recently heard about 
a, a, a monk in the, sixth, in the 15th century that he ministered in two places at once. People gave testimony and ministered two places at once. All he would do is just say simple prayers. Blind would see, deaf would hear, crippled would walk. You know, I was recently hearing about how, how, how Ann Hutchinson and a few, other women, a few other ladies all of a sudden busted through to a, a power of the Holy Ghost that shook, an earthquake shook New England. I mean, there's been a lot of signs and wonders that America has taken place. And every one of those people you look back on, they sacrificed it all. They paid the ultimate sacrifice for the kingdom. They died for the kingdom. Are there such human beings alive today? Are there any, is there anyone shaped in the image and likeness of God today that are of such, such character, such love, of such integrity, such fidelity in God? Does such a, does such a thing even exist? Does it even exist? Jesus said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find any faith? Will he find any faithfulness? Speaking of the threatening days that are approaching upon us. But I, you know, as I was saying, I want you, I mean, I just praise God for those of you who do hook up with me in faith, because I can feel it. I mean, I look at it, I just can feel it, feel it. You know, I say, I'm believing God for 100,000, and there's not any other stuff going on, just faith. There's not a what about me and how about me and all the other stuff that goes on in the me realm. It's just faith. Amen. We want to see this happen. Amen. We see huge finances. You get out of the stuff in the world. Get out of it. Yes. If I start seeing the world on you, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to start screaming and hollering. Especially the closer you are to me. Ask my family. You have not heard anything. You become my disciple, I'm going to run you through the ringer. If I see, if I smell the world on you. If I smell compromise on you. If I smell anything but giving it all on you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to rake you over the coals. I am a sharp threshing instrument that hath teeth. That threshes the mountains. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you why. How can you sit there and say, how can you stand there and say you love him and you surrendered all to him and you live that way of yeah. self-interest and self-concern absorbed with your own things? Yeah. Give me a break. Yeah. It's a lie. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Hereby we know that we know him yeah. because we keep his commandments. We do exactly what he says. He just says he knows him and doesn't obey him. It's a liar. You're a liar. I'm not going to let anybody deceive themselves and be a liar. Huh? Yeah. If you hear somebody telling you, Big Wendy, what do you do? Stand there and smile? Huh? You say, you're lying, don't you? you say, you're lying and you know you're lying. Quit lying. All liars should have their part in the lake of fire. I'm going to stand and watch somebody send themselves to hell. You want them to say it? Yeah. Oh, just, don't say nothing. No, don't say nothing. Just let them go ahead and lie. We know they're lying, but we're going to say nothing. Don't want to offend them. Send them to hell, but don't offend them. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Thank you, Jesus. Everybody in the place changed tonight? You changed? Yeah. Is there anybody in this place that's going to continue to live the same way you've been living? Anybody? No. I truly believe that he is either Lord, master, ruler of all that you are and all that you have, or he is not master, ruler at all. I truly believe that because that's what the Bible says. He is either master, ruler, Lord of all that you are and all that you have, or he's not the master, ruler, Lord at all. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yes. You may have another doctrine. You may, need believe, you may believe another thing, but you're wrong. And I have no, I have absolutely no responsibility to agree with you. 
but you have a responsibility to agree with me because I'm not sitting in your church that Jesus gave you. You're sitting in my church that Jesus gave me. And you'd be held accountable for it and you just better get it straight. Yes. There's not a conversation that goes on in secret the Father didn't hear it. It's not an attitude, thought that enters in your heart, your thinking, but lo, He knows it all together. You can pretend like He's somewhere far, far away on another planet, but He's not. He's right here beholding the good and the evil. He's right here trying the hearts and the actions of men. And he's trying this church. He's trying you. Where are you going to go to church if this church ceased to exist? Where are you going to church? Where are you going to go find the realms of the flow of the Holy Ghost? Where? If it comes to mind to you right now, you need to go there. Next Sunday. And make that your place of, of home, giving, and pour your life in that. Because I have no place that comes to mind. I'm all in. This is what God's given me to do. And it needs to be that way with you. We're not here to serve you only. We're here to serve you. I'm here to wash your feet. I've been doing it. I've been doing it. I've been doing a great job of it. You know, try my job on for a while. Dealing with you. Try it. It'd take you to a whole nother level of maturity real quick. But you're supposed to also learn how to serve and wash feet. Because the Lord says, he, he actually makes it one of the criteria for the evaluation of the saints. Do they wash the saints' feet? So it's not just for ministry. It's for anybody who wants to come into the ministry. Yeah. Who wants to learn of Jesus and learn of His way. You can learn how to worship your feet. You need to learn how to serve the ministry. You need to learn how to serve the church. Yeah. Who are you serving when you serve the church? Jesus. Serving Jesus. Amen. Whatever you do in word or deed, who are you supposed to be doing it to? Jesus. The living God. What does that look like? What does that service look like? Is it spotty? Is it regular? Yes. Are you serving him night and day? Yes. With praise? With your giving? You serve him 24 hours a day with your giving? Give once a week? Give praise? Give glory? Give of the finances once a week? Huh? Can you make God, can you put God into your budget every day? Could you put God, the service of the kingdom, the laying down your life for the kingdom into your life every single day and get on with the program and quit playing patty cake yes. religion? Yes. Where, it's, where it's a sacrifice, where it's the laying down of your life for real, for others, not for you. I'm going to lay down my life again. For me. Oh, <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Ayah mana hoshi raha. Hallelujah mana rama masia ha ha. Ha mama ke ya lamosita. You know it becomes such a sound of send your fire now when those kinds of things go on. It becomes such a sound of surrender. Don't back off. I mean, self-interest, fear will try to get you to hold on to your life and preserve your life. It's the way it happens. It's a, it's a human realm. 
It's a human realm. This sin is all of a sudden some threat and come, something threatening comes. You try to hold on your life. You try to preserve your life. With total abandonment, die. <laughs> die. With total abandonment, say it don't matter no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll find yourself a well, there are, if you'll give yourself this, you'll find yourself a realm where faith can work, where everything that tries to come and claim you, it has no attachment to you. You're totally disconnected from it. So they, it comes and it comes with a great threat. Oh, you owe this or you got to do this. And you're just like, let's watch what God will do. Because <laughs> you're totally detached from it. This is no, it's not, hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Suvribata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We thank you for signs and wonders and miracles that will be expressed through Naomi's life, through Anna's life, as she watches dad and mom's life as they reproduce within the lives of these that you've given them even greater things. Yes. Yes. What will the church look like in the next generation? What will the church look like when I'm 80 years old? A guy who's right about 80 years old, he was in a meeting the other night. He says, I can leave now. I can go home now because I see the fire of God burning bright. He's looking at different, different age groups in, this, in the meetings that we were just in. You know, we think about that. Are we going to live? Are we going to carry the torch of the kingdom of God, the passion, the surrender, the consecration, that it might be reproduced? Are we going to abdicate and leave it for someone else to do and run the risk that there would be no example, no one to reproduce? Because so many things have already been lost to the church. Would we abdicate and leave no opportunity for the things of the kingdom to be reproduced in the next generation, the generations when we're gone? I'm not. I'll fight for this. I'll fight you. I'll run through you. I'll, I'll disclaim everything that is not glorifying his name. We'll have a generation that say, understand the difference between that's the right thing and that's the wrong thing. Yeah. That's relationship with God yeah. and that's nothing but religion. Yeah. That's, that's losing your life and that's holding on to your life. Yeah. I know that in a great house there has to be vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. Vessels of glory and vessels of shame. But I'm telling you right now, I just believe that God would have a church yes. no. where there be nothing but vessels of honor. Yes. Nothing but members in the body of Christ. Yes. Nothing but vessels of glory. Yes. Nothing, but, not, nothing, nothing but people who are continually laying down their lives. We promise you, we promise you as an example, not as Lord over God heritage, but as examples, we will live for Jesus Christ fully for the kingdom all day tomorrow. All day Tuesday, all day Wednesday, all day Thursday, all day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. I won't be, I won't be coming in until late Sunday night. I'll be here Wednesday night. I want you to just come. I want you to, just, I want you to come. I want you to come with a heart surrendered to God. Passionate towards heaven. So that the flow of the Holy Ghost will be uninterrupted in your life. Yes. Yes. Jesus, precious Jesus. We want you to give your life sacrificially. We want to see the evidence of it. God demands that you bring proofs, that you bring fruit, evidence of your repentance, evidence of your life surrender to God. He demands it. He demands it. And it's right, because it's for our good. It's for our profit, it's for our prosperity, it's for our wealth, it's for our maturity, it's for our growth. 
He gets nothing out of it other than the fact that he's got witnesses. Yes. He's got people that will go and display his goodness, his love. What does it look like to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus? What does it look like to be born again? Whew. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. <laughs> Everybody, would you stand with me? Just Hallelujah. How many of you have been just living in communion? Amen. Just do, just do it. Just live in communion. Live in the price that he paid for you because what, what's going to happen is if you'll do this, these things that I'm talking about and I'm, and I'm pleading with you about, you understand. You understand. You go, my, how could it be that anyone would hold back on God? How could it be that anyone would live for themselves? How could it be? I can understand this. I can understand how people in other churches could live for themselves and be deceived to believe that they're fully living for God. But I don't see how that's possible here. And yet it exists. Because the anointing, the presence of God, the floodlight of heaven is here. There should be plenty of examples, plenty of evidence of what it means to fully live for Him. What it means to build His house. What it means to lay down your life for the church and for a lost and dying world. What it means to live out a sacrificial life so that others could go free. I mean, is there any, there's surely, there's no one any, there's no one in here that's willing to be okay with people dying and going and spending eternity in a place called the lake of fire. Surely there's no one who's good with that. You're okay with just walking around and just being so aloof from God that people that you were looking at are going to spend eternity in such hideous pain and torment and you never told them that they're on their way to a devil's hell unless they repent. How can that be? How can it be that because you hold on to your life and the very basics of fellowship and communion, the basics of worship, the basics of surrender, the basics of your treasure, the basics of what represents you as a person, an individual that exists in this world. Tonight, God is inviting you to come to the cross, He's inviting you to lay it all down before. He's looking for somebody who can send into a lost and dying world. He's looking for somebody that he can use to break off the strongholds of blindness of heart and demon power. Sin and iniquity and the deception and the lie and the yoke of religion, which is as bad as anything else. The yoke of religion itself justifies a person who has no expression of relationship. All the time here in San Diego, there is very little witness, very, very little witness of his love, very, 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 very little witness of his power. Papa's calling you and I, he's calling us to come before him empty vessels. Empty vessels. It's going to be for him. It's the empty vessels. That we might be completely yielded to him. That every dimension of our life would be totally surrendered to the Spirit of the Lord so God the Holy Ghost can express the life and power and glory of heaven, the life and power and glory of Jesus Christ, that His authority will flow uninhibited and unlimited through our lives to break off the yokes. We want to try to stand around and educate people into the kingdom of God. It doesn't work that way. It's an encounter with the presence of the Lord. If you have no ability to bring an encounter with the presence of the Lord, you have nothing in God to give. You have nothing really at all to give. 
except for religion. I pray tonight that you'll be desperate with me because I tell you, I'm desperate. You know, we, we, many times we leave the meetings and yeah, we've seen great things happen. And we are, we're just caught away in heaven. But in that place, we still see the, see those that didn't get healed or didn't get delivered or didn't get a breakthrough. Still we're contrasting that meeting compared to what God wants to do in terms of revealing the glory and majesty of heaven, the full power and demonstration of the life and ministry of Jesus. We just go home and lay in bed most of the night just saying, oh God, whatever you've got to do, show us, Lord. See, there's a neediness and a brokenness that would bring forth a lowliness and a meekness. And there it began to be manifested an ever-increasing glory and ever-increasing anointing. But until you begin to get in the throes of this, you'll never even know anything about this. And all you'll have is educated ideas of what it's supposed to look like. And you become a talking head instead of a moving body. Let it not be. Don't, don't run the risk of living a ruinous life when God's called you to such greatness. You want to be great in the kingdom? God wants you to be great. You're going to have to learn how to be the servant of all. You're going to have to learn how to wash feet. You're going to have to learn how to serve this ministry with your finances, with it all. You have to learn to serve the ministry. You become responsible for everything. You become responsible for all the bills. You personally. Don't just leave it on me. You personally. You become responsible for all the bills. You. Too many men of God have allowed everybody to go free of responsibility and they've taken it on. They've gotten all the anointing too and they've gotten all the growth and they've gotten all the maturity and they've gotten all the use, fullness in the kingdom. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the night, they were responsible for the bills because it was their name on it. It's about time God's people begin to bear the responsibility of the glory. And understand what a joy it is. So that you can grow and so that you can mature. Get your name on it. Let there be proof and evidence that you laid down your life for the kingdom. Let there be proof and evidence that you sold out for the name of Jesus. Let there be proof and evidence in the court of heaven. No circumstantial evidence, proof, evidence. That's why I think the martyr's crown is probably, that's one to covet, you know? No, not a lot of people know that. <laughs> You're gonna have to get out in there, risk your life a couple of times and you begin to feel it. Risk your life for the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Revival now. Your Bible now. Your fire now. Display the glory now. Display the glory now. Whew. I'm going to say it one more time because it's got to be said where you can hear it. God is not any room to move until there's lowliness and meekness. Until there's brokenness and neediness. There's no room for him to move. There's no room for him to move. There's no place of his genuine glory being made manifest. This is how his anointing works. It's how it works. It works with a talent and basin, doing the lowest of servants' jobs, all the way to the lowest place of what everybody else says. You can't do that. You can't act like that. You're not that low. You got to get a Gentile slave to do that. You got to be. You got to get somebody who's the untouchable to do that. You, you, you can't be that. That person.
We live in a culture that imposes upon us the pride of life, that imposes upon us arrogance, mastery of our own selves, territorialism, and every animal instinct that can be named in the demonic realm that functions in human beings. That can't be. It can't be that profanes his name. It can't be in the holies of holies. It can't be. It's got to stop. It can't be. It can't be. Tonight, that wound is going to be healed. Tonight, that pain is going to be cured. It's going to be healed. Tonight, you're going to obey God all the way. You're going to go all the way with God tonight. You're not going to hold anything back on him tonight. Believe me, the Lord leaves the 90 and 9 religious. He leaves the 90 and 9 religious. And if that's all that is in here, 99 religious, he won't be here. He leaves it to go find the one that will have relationship with him. To go find the one that's lost, looking to be found. Because when you're lost in that kind of a state, amongst all the predators, you're very needy. You're looking for a shepherd. The 90 and 9, they have each other to depend upon. They're just looking for each other's approval. Because that's the context, believe me, that's the context. When you come into this place on Sunday night and the anointing is as strong as it was when we were worshiping, don't you stand there. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you stand there looking like that. Don't you do it. If nothing else, you pretend. You pretend to be happy. You pretend to be excited about Him. You pretend to be in love with Him. Because we're not going to have a show and a display that would disgrace God and His only begotten Son in this house. That the lost would come in and see such a, such a thing. And especially if you call yourself a leader. I don't care if you're, I don't care if you're the leader of, of the of the cleanup crew. You have a responsibility to show forth his glory. You get out your way. And don't be a false witness because Papa hates a false witness. Big old frown on your face. Here we are worshiping. All you got is just some somber look. Closed mouth. Sealed tomb. Don't do it. Because I'm not tolerating it. I'm not tolerating. You're not coming to my house acting like that. I'm not tolerating it. You listen to me. I'm not tolerating it. Got my belt on tonight. I'll pull it off. We'll start cleaning the house. Hey man, I was at a meeting the other night. People got excited about that. Some of you look a little threatened. I'll get after you and watch. God himself will come take my part. You obey. You obey. You become, you come under the rule. You obey. You're not in charge around here. You serve him. You obey. Christ Jesus is in charge. Oh, the ghost is in charge. We bow before him. We carry the yoke of responsibility upon us. Jesus yoked us up together with him. We yoked together with him. I and the children which the Lord has given me. To sing praise in the midst of the congregation. 
we have a responsibility to show forth His praise. I don't want to ever have to have this talk with you again. If you'll just start lavishly giving of your finances, you'll lavishly give of every other dimension of your heart. I know what the problem is. You don't. I got my information directly from God. You didn't. If you had, you had already been doing it. I'm delivering the message. I'm getting you out of your spiritual poverty. I'm getting you over into the joy of the Lord. I'm getting you over into the high praises of God. Hallelujah. Of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, anybody who doesn't have one of these cards, you raise your hand. And somebody get one to you. If you've already filled out a card, and I know some of you have. Because now I'm, now I'm looking at everything. Because I'm a doctor. See what's wrong with you. See what's right with you. See what's going on in your life. Father has called you to lay your life down for the church. He's called you to lay your life down to the church and to love the church like he loved it. And we're going to hold you responsible because we're tired of sitting around babysitting it. Time to move on with God now. It ain't right that I go to a church for one week and start seeing things happening there that ain't happening here after years. Are you listening to me? I'm not, look, I got the contrast going on now in a big way. I'm not tolerating it. I'm not gonna tolerate it. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna demand of you to be, to be who God's called you to be and do what's right. And if you don't want to do it, you're going to have to understand you've got to get out of the way. Because if there's someone in the way here who's not willing to obey, you get out, you be, you be honest of heart enough with God to say, look, God, I'm not going to do what, what's right. I'm not going to obey you. I'm going to get out of the way because then a hundred will come take your place. A hundred. One hundred. But you got right, if you get right with God, a thousand come stand with you. thousand come stand with you let's just do it you do it you do it you do it you do it don't just leave it to one or two people who do it don't just leave it to one or two people 
John, John, just leave it to one or two people. I know a young woman in this church who gave over $12,000 for the building fund, for Oregon. She was probably one of the least could afford it. Don't you leave your job to other people to do. Don't you do it. That ain't right. You serve the church. It's your church, you serve it. You become, you become responsible for the bills, not the decisions, the bills. That's serving. We didn't say lead, we didn't say anything about leading, we said about serving. Huh? You become responsible for the work. Are you and me? Not the direction. You got that? That really kind of, it really kind of goes cross grain, don't it? Just a little bit. In some situations, a little bit cross grain. Shouldn't be, should be right with the grain. Should be right with the grain of the heart, grain with the spirit, the grain of your life, the grain of your commitment. You serve the church. I want you to understand what the abiding place ministry is because I can assume that some of you don't understand. We're about a local church, seeing a local church established that looks like what God says in the New Testament. No shortcuts. Everything or nothing. All in. We're about planting churches and building churches across the United States. Oregon being only the first of many. Just the first of many. So if you think this is a one-time thing, we're going to wear you out. And if you're not ready to be wore out, you just have to understand, you're in the wrong place. You can't stand here and cheer me on and get credit for it. You got to do it. Understand, God loves you. He's sending you home. He says, send all the cowards home. Send them home. We can't use that. People got other interests. Send them home. They just bought a field and they... Send them home. People don't know how to drink right. Send them home. I can't reveal my glory through people don't know how to drink right. You understand, we committed to evangelizing the churches of the United States of America, and that costs money. And that's coming out of your pocket. You're supposed to serve it and finance it. If you don't want to do that, you're in the wrong spot over here. You're in the wrong spot. I want to lay it down to you tonight. I want to have this conversation. We'd be done with it. Everybody knows where we stand. Where you stand, where I stand, what your commitment is, what my commitment is, what God's commitment is. Do you understand me? Yes. Everybody here, free will. It's not a prison. You get to come if you desire or leave if you desire. But this is what we're going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's going to cost you. You need to get to work. And especially get to work in the realms of faith because you can't outgive God. Because you start giving like this and he's going to cause all abundance to come on you. Hallelujah. And you're going, to, you're going to be a wellspring of supply. I promise you. And I see it up here on this front row. God's going to raise up another generation. You know, the Lord told me, he said, just get your kids and set them in front of the church and watch what will happen. Just tell everybody else to get out of the way. Get kids, set them in front of the church, make them the leaders of the youth, watch what will happen. And I see the fruit of it. Because I see something coming forth that's radical. Because God doesn't need anything but a willing heart and He'll produce supernatural faith that will oh, bankroll everything that God is doing. Amen. Hallelujah. God opened opportunity. God opened doors of opportunities. I know that this is what this book is going to be. We're going to see hundreds of thousands of people. This book is going to shake people's life. It's going to shake people's life, isn't it, baby? Isn't it, Allie? It's going to shake people's life. It's going to shake people's lives. Hundreds of thousands of people are going to be shaken. 
plus it's going to create a stream of finances. Which I don't know. I might just use all that for crusades. I don't know. I haven't. Just waiting on the Lord. Because I don't want to take your responsibility away from you. So you step up to what you're supposed to be doing. Quit playing pretend kingdom of God. Get into the real adult program. Adult kingdom of God. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah. Praise the name of Jesus. And we, as this church ministry, we're not just doing one, two, three things. We have a missions vision that goes beyond most anything that's out there. Because we committed to seeing the infrastructure laid to raise up missionaries for the next 200 yes. years yes. to go to the unreached people groups with a very clear focus and target upon orphans and the elderly. Yes. Yes. And that's where we begin. And that costs lots of money. And you're paying. You. You. You're paying. Go into debt. Get with the program. You. Let's understand our roles and responsibilities here. Somebody didn't get it. Because I got a financial report last week that blew my mind. I said, I said, what, Pop? What do you think about this? He said, let it go. Read the right act. Let people know what's really going on and how I feel about it. They'll finance everything for themselves, but nothing for the kingdom. Nonsense. Now, God's gonna have him a valiant church. He'll start with one family and produce it if it takes 430 years. Yeah, he's going to have himself a valiant people. Amen. Hallelujah. That can trust him and step into his will and his blessing. Huh? God took a hold of Abraham. He took a hold of him. But he was willing to go with him and dig into intense trials and opposition to bring him in the most worst condition into great wealth. I've discovered anything that God ever did in anybody else's life, both in the Bible or in, in, you know, the community of the church. He'll do for me. Amen. If I meet his conditions. If I meet his conditions. I'll meet his conditions. You going to meet his conditions? You concerned about your own bills? Good. Concerned about your life? Just checking, we always got to check up. I know you're not. You're an angel. You're a saint, Saint Anne. Saint Anne of the kingdom of God. Saint Anne of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, God. This has cost you something. It's got to be painful. It's got to hurt. It's got to be a rugged cross on your shoulders. It's got to be a suffering. It's got to be a laying down of your life. Otherwise, you're playing games on God. Acting like you know something when there's no show of the reality of your heart being joined under the Lord. You're going to do this stuff. Amen. I'm going to do this. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Okay. You want to get the mic? So you don't have to speak out of my... <laughs> the hand of God is all over the church at the MTC, and he strategically put it yes, he has. in a place where there's so many fatherless children being raised because there's such a methamphetamine problem, there's such an alcoholism problem, and these kids are being raised by no one. And when Pastor was talking about Brazil and all these prostitute kids, it's right there. It's right at the MTC. It's right in our front door, our back door. And the God is bringing us together in San Diego for the fatherless generation right there at Quartz Mountain Church. God
God wants to raise us up to these kids. There was the time Joshua and I just got to minister. There was a six-year-old Mary, and she just stared at me the entire time, three hours of church, captivated by the anointing, and she was picked up by her father. It was so high, so high, just smoking, and he had all rocks, and he threw the kids in the back of the truck and this big rock pile, and they went away, and I was just like, Father, just praying over them, the protection of the Lord, because you guys, we are going after some radical, radical things in the kingdom of God. This isn't just a church sitting out in a beautiful mountain in the pine trees. It's a church strategically put to take these children and give them a lighthouse, to give them the hospital that they need to set them free of all these addictions because their lives are set for the pit of hell. There's all set. These kids, the kid little Jack, five years old, has already been high on methamphetamines, has already been drunk. The kid is five years old, and Michaela went and reached them by a cup of coffee. And you guys, we are being called. This is so much bigger than just giving a few dollars and saying, Father, I want to be the $10,000 giver. Father, allow me to finance $100,000 for this church because we want to see that whole nation, the whole nation. But it starts right there. If we can't be faithful with what God's given us at Quartz Mountain Church, then how can we take the rest of the nation? How can we take the rest of the world? There won't be the we fight. have to start right here. We have to start. We have to give bigger. We have to get this finance because God will do it, not you. But you need to step out in faith and say, Father, I want to see Jack and Mary. I want to see them set on fire with the Holy Ghost and fire because Mary will take the nation. She has nothing. She has nothing but the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. She has nothing else. So, Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' mighty name. We command the hundred grand to come in tonight. Father, tonight it is financed by you in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the faith in this church to do the things you called us to do. Father, we will be faithful, Lord. We will be valid for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Woo! Now, let me tell you where that passion comes from. That passion comes from the reality and the consciousness that that Allie knows this is what God is doing. Yes. Not some one thing that man is doing. Amen. See, it's a big difference when you make a transition into heaven. Oh, by the way, this week, we received the full approval from every county department for the church. Full approval. Everything. Everything. That's everything. That's planning department. That's environmental health and environmental septic system uh building woo building department everything done 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 in most in most states that would have taken months and months and thousands and tens of thousands and here in the united here in san diego hundreds of thousands of dollars done done finished Yes, every opportunity that people just simly, seemingly take as an option, I don't. I'm like Ali. Wait, this is God's test for me. Yes. Am I going to do this? If I'm going to opt out to do this, and then I'm never going to get to do the next thing. You can talk about all the big things you're going to do. You'll do nothing. You got to risk your life at the point that God gives you the opportunity. And it's, we become ferocious about it. And, you know, the reality of it is, is we've got, we've got ranchers committed. To do, used to go to church, go to church anywhere. As soon as the building's up, they're coming. Not only that, we're doing camp meetings there. Not only do that, we're doing pastors' conferences there. Pastors have come from all over the, all over the United States. I'm telling you right now, we're, we're going to be doing lengthy camp meetings there. There's special, there's going to be special, there's special programs already up and going for the kids that Allie's talking about. And that's all over. It's epidemic because of the Indian reservations and the culture around. It's just epidemic. It's epidemic. It's epidemic. People are living on social services enough to buy drugs all day long, to live high all day long, and their kids are just abandoned. And not only that, we write, we are right now, we were just, Daniel and I was just laboring. We had Mike too. Praise God for Mike. What a, what a, what a, what a jewel. What a faithful servant who's helped advance so many things. And we were just, we were getting things ready because we are going to start doing youth camps. There's absolutely, we're not going to just do church youth camps. We're going to do youth camps for a broad cross section of people. We're going to have, it's ultimately going to funnel into special youth camps, but it's going to be broad, broad sweep youth camps going all the way from elementary school to high school. We're getting set for it. 
we're, we're running wide open. Daniel is carrying the torch of it. The anointing is on him. The passion is there. Uh, you sit back and watch the kingdom of God. I'm going to build it. You get an opportunity to do it. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm not silly enough to think that I'm the only one doing something in the kingdom of God because there's a lot of people doing things in the kingdom of God. And I'm blessed for you to go join them if that's what you want to do. But if you're here, you're supposed to be joining up with me. And the direction you're supposed to, the way you feel it and the way you know it's God for you to do it is because it just came out of my mouth. Amen. You got that? It just came out of my mouth. That's how you know it's God and that's exactly the limit of what you're supposed to know. Amen. Now your response is to obey and say, okay, God said do this, let's just go do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I we, we'll tell you right, we're going to put every one of you to work. Yes. I'm not seeing the fire of God right here on this front row. I'm happy to do it. Hallelujah. Second row, I'm just the youth. I'm just I see it. Yes. I see an abandonment of faith. Yes. I see abandonment of giving. Yes. Lavishly giving to God. Yes. Just pouring out your best on him all the time. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Whew. Hallelujah. I just want to make sure that everybody understands in the place so that you don't think it's supposed to be left to somebody else. God's talking to you. If you think if I give, I'll go without. You you don't know what you don't know you do not know what it is about. If you think here's what the Lord spoke to me this morning. I'm gonna say it again in closing tonight. Father said to me this morning, there's nothing so beautiful in all my creation as someone emptied, yielded, and surrendered before my presence. Just hear my, oh God, I have no other interest but you. Hear my, oh God, I don't want to do anything except for those things that you purpose for me to do. I'm not holding anything back. I'm not holding on to anything else. I'm yours and only yours. Send me now. I'll go for you. There's nothing, think about it, that there is nothing more beautiful than my Father's creation. I want to be that, don't you? Therefore, I'm going to be that. Therefore, I'm going to be that. I'm going to empty everything out. Hallelujah. Everything. Hallelujah. Barasa de Vikilia. Barasa Kaladia Lia Lavataka. Harasa Tikiria Tisha. I want, you to, I want you to come and give and I, want you, and I want you to understand that it's like getting in a prayer line. Uh, I want you to just come give and let the anointing of God touch you. And here's what I want you to do. Never appear before His presence ever again empty-handed. Okay? Always bring something. Always be ready to give because you should be respecting, expecting to receive. And it's a reciprocal thing. Huh? Don't just come expecting God to serve you. You come serving God every time. Never appear before His presence ever again empty-handed. 
Never. 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 Say, I vow it. I'll never appear before him empty handed. I'll never honor the waitress at the restaurant more than him. I'll never honor the business owner at the restaurant more than I honor him. Go sit down and eat food and get up and not expect to pay your bills. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Come in, be fed the spiritual food of heaven and act like it's some big sacrifice that you have to give. Your heart's never been touched by him, if that's the way it is. Because when your heart's touched by him, you break the alabaster box. You're like, okay, Father, show me unique ways to give. How can I get it? I want to give more. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, come on, we're getting the prayer line. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. One time I was in a meeting and I turned to Anna and I said, honey, did you, where's your purse? Oh, I, I left it. You did what? You, I, 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 I forgot it. We were, I don't remember where we were. It was something going on. It was just one of those unique things. I didn't have anything to give. I'm like, oh no, I'm like in a total panic. Here comes the offering basket. I did a fake drop. I got so rebuked of God, the Holy Ghost, man. I tell you right now. I was so ashamed of myself that I had nothing to give. I was superior to before the Lord empty handed. But you can't get a fake drop over on God. That's for people only. <laughs> It's terrible when we have to deal with our hypocrisy, doesn't it? Isn't it? We, 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 it, it, we learn things through it if we'll just remain tenderhearted. Huh? We do just learn. Praise God. I don't ever want to repeat that lesson again. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father is making us excessively wealthy to do the things that he's purposed us to do in the kingdom. Because he knows that everything that comes into our charge and into our hands, we will completely and fully thrust it into his work. And he's just looking for some more people that he can use. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We were just recent, we were just out this week you know, expanding what we call Cabin Lane out on the ranch, dreaming about all of the ministries who sowed their life into the kingdom. And when they turn 70, they have nothing because they sowed their whole life in the kingdom. And we're going to be able to provide a place for them to stay. I mean, I'm, I mean I've got this great vision of some of the most amazing wonderful ministries on the planet that they retire you talk about our holy ghost meetings that we're going to be having out there okay bunch of people come off the mission field hey having poured their life in i mean like brother Yun's already said that that's where he wants to live out his life i mean, imagine having a bunch of people huh preachers all up what we call cabin alley cabin lane hallelujah and we've already got a church now. We got a church road now. 
we developed a church road that connects Cabin Lane over to the church so you don't have to go out on the tarmac. Hallelujah, man, we're just so excited about being entrusted with things by the Lord so that we can fully serve the ministry, serve the things on every area. Where is it that you're going to hold on to your life and, and limit what God's going to do through you? If you'll take hold of it, you won't have to be still grasping for straws, reaching for the end of the rainbow after so long of time. There will be tangible realities, developments in your life, substance that you see now that you build on. It increases. But it cost everything. Because God can never take you into the realms of glory that He wants to take you. And wealth is a part of that glory unless with total abandonment you come to Him. Oh, abandonment. I can't. He comes to, he comes to me with such a press by the Holy Ghost. It's like it's an expression that is a thunder on the inside of me. I don't even know how to express it. Because God demands it. Total abandonment. Total abandonment. I want to be so hid away in God that only God can be seen. I want to be so removed from it all and removed from the scene that I'm just standing saying the simplest prayers, watching God do the great miracles, preaching the simplest sermon, watching God bring the greatest revelation. Just like as the Lord showed us when we were in Nepal in 2008, we just said hello to that massive crowd of people, just hello, and so many people, devils went out of people, thousands, multitudes of people, devils went out of them instantly, but just at the hello. I want to live in that. There's a cost. And the cost was to be willing to go and be killed by the Maoist and everybody with us killed by the Maoist. And the cost was a $175,000 bill that it took to put a, to do the, to do the crusade. And the sacrifices that literally had ripple effects even out a year later, year and a half later, that impacted the food that we ate. But that was okay, we had no problem with it, right? No problem. It's okay. No problem. We were living in the glory of it. Hallelujah. So the Lord could just try us. He could search us. See, how do you feel about the relationship now? I'm ready to do it again. Let's do it again. Okay. Then here, let me entrust you with more. Because Father's going to try our hearts. He's going to try us through the opportunities that He gives us. This is very practical, people. It's not existential. It's not mysterious. It's very practical. You want God to fill you? You get everything else out. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I hope it doesn't come as a shock to too many people tonight that God wants everything about your life, not just some things. I hope it doesn't come as too a big of a surprise that God demands it all. And let me just be a witness among the thousands, among the hundreds of thousands. Oh, what a deal. Oh, what a deal. Oh, what a blessing. The rich man or the person whose heart's all wrapped up in the world, they get real sad about these things. Sad. Sad can be broken tonight. Sad is an oppressive demon spirit that works in the realms of your own self-interest and fear. We'll break that thing tonight. So you're not going to be tormented and harassed. Of course, you can just rise up and just start shouting, praising God.
Hallelujah. It's a great responsibility that God has given us to fully represent Him. You know what I mean? But, you know, He who has commanded us to such a supernatural realm will also supply us with the ability. We look at the husbandman who's taking care of this program and the vine that you're in. No more lingering. No more wavering. No more holding back. No more staggering between two opinions. No more having a double eye. No more having two affections. No more running the risk that if that light that is in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? No more running the risk. Let us live every day like it's our last. That let us live every day in preparation to step over into the realms of divine power and glory. You want to start seeing great miracles, great faith? You have to be the first partaker of the fruit. You have to be the first one with abandonment. Trust God. Hallelujah. Anybody have any sickness, any disease, anything you want Father to do in you physically? How are you doing, Faith? Yeah, you're doing really good. I can see that. In the name of Jesus, it stops right now. Just lift your hands towards heaven and Papa touch you. Father loves you so much, Faith. Look at the anointing all over you. I was in there actually admiring the glory on her. Hallelujah. So glad to see my little sister Faith stepping over into the place that God's called her to. Sometimes we have little shockwaves go on in our life. Papa never gives up. Just waiting for us to give in. It's true. Living your life boring. Living his life exciting. Faith adventure. The grand adventure is discovering that we have his authority. The pressing into the realm of reality where whatever we ask, he will do it. Pressing it, pressing it, launching out to discover the realms of divine empowerment that has been supplied to us, but we have to risk everything to go there. It's a fearful thing, it's scary. And most men refuse to go because they hold on to the self. And I pray tonight that you die and go to heaven. Hallelujah. Of course, that's what you said you did, and that's really what you did when you received this wonderful new life in Christ Jesus. You died. You were buried. You were raised up to live with Him, to be seated in heaven. So you died effectively and went to heaven. Amen. You know what is going to happen to me tomorrow? I'm going to wake up, and I'm going to live in heaven all day. I'm going to live in heaven all day long. We're going to step into one miracle. we got so many miracles going on, so many things for miracles going on. We just let you in on one miracle. You get to participate with one miracle. we got so many exciting miracles going on right now. Woo! 
<laughs> where we get to see God do exploits through us and on our behalf. This is an exciting life. You can't even believe it. You won't even believe it. If I told you, you wouldn't even believe it. I'm not going to tell you. I don't want to freak anybody out any more than I already have. Scare you any more than I am. Just go ahead and step into where it's at right now and watch God take you some places you can't even imagine. Because God's going to respect your person. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. If he did it for Enoch, he'll do it for you and me. If he did it for Job, he'll do it for you and me. I woke up early in the morning while well, I was in a dream. And I heard the voice of the Lord audibly speak to me. I was in a situation and I was watching people trying to move in the supernatural. And they were trying to move in the supernatural to their logic. And there was some things that were set up within the dream that made me to understand very clearly. Here they're trying to move in the supernatural, move the things of the spirit to their own human effort and manipulation, to their own logic and ideas. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, and I heard an audible voice. The Lord said, Receive from Job. And so I'm like, oh, So I immediately wake up. Receive from Job. Where did you say Job? And it was ringing in my ears. Receive from Job. I immediately go to Job and I start reading. The, ins the insight. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Now in Jesus' name. The insight. Hallelujah. The things that he knew about Father. Amazing. The doctrines of Job are very good. They're just misapplied. Very good doctrines. They're just misapplied. Job misapplies good doctrines against God. And Job's counselors misapply very good doctrines against Job. All good doctrines just misapplied. Did you know that the Holy Ghost has come here to literally show us and reveal to us the Father? Just, just, just keep her in here. Let me spank her. Before you take her out, let's, let's move into some correction zone. We love that baby. She's tenderhearted. I don't know how to spank her. I would if I needed to, if I had the consent of mom and dad. So I'm gonna sit by and watch her do things she's not supposed to do. I'm into doing it right. Are you into doing it right? There's a great reward in doing it right. I want you to think about this. I want you to leave out of here tonight just, re just understanding. You're holding on to the wrong thing. You're valuing the wrong thing. If it upsets you to lose everything, your value system is whacked out, is messed up. God the Holy Ghost is here to reveal the Father to us. I'm talking about the reality. God's real, real God, real, true, and you are truly God. He's really real. And He's here. And He wants you to discover Him. He's a very present God. He wants you to have an encounter with Him. And these things that we're talking about right now is the action, the depths of relationship and consecration response to him. It's true. It's true. Wow. I said, I've just been reading Job, just been studying. The amazing insight he had to who the Father is. Wow. And he didn't have what we have. Will you press it? Will you walk with Him? Will you let God come and reveal Himself to you? Will you quit holding on to your own life so He can come and walk with you? So it can be said of you that you walk with God? Because very soon, that's all you're going to be able to live on. Your life in this time is a very short span, 80 years, short span, ready, preparing you for ages. Ages. Ages, I said, ages. It's about time you get a revelation. Understand, 
You need to quit living in the temporal realm. And you need to start living in an internal realm. You need to quit living based upon what your five senses tell you and start living in a realm called the realms of the spirit, the unseen. Have, looking not on that which is seen. Not looking for your supply from those things which are seen. Not looking for your value from the things which are seen. But looking on that which is unseen. Having your heart and your value and your provision from that realm. How are you doing, sweetie? What's up? In the name of this, is the Lord going to heal that right now? Father, we thank you for the healing of it right now. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for supernatural signs and wonders, miracle power. I had to miss Craig here. Hallelujah. Father, nothing less than the full display of your power and your glory to this life. Can we go to the nations? Can we just go? Can we just go? Can you just get on an airplane and go? Can you just get in a place to a situation? Can we just get into a place? Can I just get into a place to where all of a sudden we can just speak it and stadiums are filled with people? Where we can just go for two nights to a church and the power of God sits on the place and doesn't lift off. And everybody shakes under the power of God that even gets near the get, even gets near the property. Do you want it? I'm so passionate about it. I'm so desperate for that. Do you want that? Do you want that? Are you wanting to pay the price for it? It's a price. It's a complete abandonment, forsaking of your life to live out His. You no more take any thought or concern for your own life. It doesn't even matter anymore. You're caught up in heaven. I want the reality of God. I'm not interested in half measures. I'm not interested in holding on some little baby steps with God. Amen. Holding on to my own life as my backup. Throw yourself into this. Hallelujah. Is there anything tonight that you have in your life that does not belong? 100% to Jesus Christ. Anything. Anything that you possess. Anything that belongs to you that is not 100% God's. If there is tonight, Father wants you to turn it over to Him. That whatever He asks, whatever He requires of you, you are so blessed and delighted to do it. If you want to follow him, you have to forsake everything. The disciple said, but we've forsaken everything to follow you. He said, I know it. Good. And he went on to say other things. But that's what they demanded of them. And he doesn't have plan B for you and me. Why, why would we think that he does? Because it's the 21st century. Why would we think that God's word changes? If you and I will start responding to the cross in consecration to Jesus, we will open the door for the millions to come in. If you and I will start responding fully to the cross, we will open the door for the millions to come in. Imagine that a preacher gets an idea that he's going to start spending a hundred thousand dollars a month on doing crusades in the United States of America. He's going to re rent the big venues and do it all. It doesn't matter if anyone shows up. He's going to sow. 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 He's going to do it. 
and it did it until it breaks. I say, that's a God idea. I say, that's valiant. Praise God that there are some people still on the earth. Can you imagine that? He says to me on the phone, it's only 1.2 million a year. And you know what his seed is? You know what his seed is? His house. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. Papa's looking for people to be like that. His seed is his house. This sell the house. There'll be the money to start it. And watch God do it. <laughs> it's the grand adventure. Tyler, it's the grand adventure, man. It's proving God. It's getting into the program. No half measures. It's going for broke. It's finding out that God truly is who He says He is and will do what He says He'll do if you'll not go all the way with Him. Yes, Lord. I'm in. Yeah. I'm doing it. I'm in. Yes, Lord. Don't let up, James. Don't let up. Let's do this thing. Sandy, don't let up. Let's go. Cuba's calling. I'm living every day. I live every day with Cuba calling. Cuba's calling. Kashmir's calling. Armenia's calling. Azerbaijan is calling. The nations are calling. Whew. Iraq is calling. Iran is calling. They're calling. The Kurds are calling. They're calling. Tajikistan is calling. Afghanistan, Kabul is calling. It's calling. It's calling. They're calling. They're calling. You don't have anything to do. You don't know what to do. Oh. The nations are calling. Surrender your life to the Lord. Just give everything you have and you'll be able to hear real clearly. Let's go, wow. Can you hear all that? Yeah, I've been hearing that. Isn't that amazing? No half measures. Say no half measures. No half measures. We're going for the fire of God. We're going for the outpouring of heaven, which God demands is a whole burnt sacrifice that meets his criteria. Has to meet his criteria. Can be no lame offering. Must meet his criteria. Must be perfect. Just as he required it. And I intend to give that offering. Yes, Lord. I intend to be that offering. I intend to let God reprove, correct, rebuke, instruct every dimension of my life that I may be fully, fully furnished, fully developed, yes, Lord. prepared unto every good work. Come, let's do this. There's so many rooms that God has given us in this building. They just laid, they stayed empty. So many rooms, so many area, so much room out there. Geneva's got a great big plan for the end of September. Everybody needs to have a great big plan for every day in the month. There's so much room right up there. Platform. Platform set up. It couldn't get any easier. Part of a sound system. I want the miracles of Jesus to be displayed because I know people will come from every part of the city. Just, just seeing the miracles of Jesus. I want to get into whatever it takes. I want to get everything straight, everything that I'm responsible for, I want it to submit it to God, and you're part of what I'm responsible for, so I'm going to be on you. I'm going to get it right. I'm going to get everything in order. I'm not going to go to a church somewhere else, spend four days, and see an outpouring of God and not have it going on here. I'm not going to do it. 
I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But we get things right. So God can do what he wants to do. Father wants to come and utter his voice in this place. I want you to be bold and brave. I want you to understand. Father wants to do this, but it's going to come through brokenness and neediness. Because lowliness and meekness is what's going to make us bold and brave and confident in God so that we can stand back and watch Father do it and get all the glory. And we're not going to step in there and try to promote our own self, get all territorial and say, this is mine, this belongs to me. Nothing belongs to me. I'm going to be hidden away. I'm going to be on my face where Jesus Christ does his mighty works. Because God's got to do it. And God's going to do it through people that are yielded and obedient to Him. I've got to have it. Yes. You might can live without it. I hope that's not the case. I must have. I must have what God commands. I'll demand of myself. And I'll demand of you because God has put you in front of me and given me charge to speak into your life. Amen. And if you don't believe that's so, then you need to just go back and read the verses of Scripture that I just briefly went over. Went over. You're going to do a lot of death. He's given me charge over you. Amen. Not as a Lord. But as an example, not by constraint or for fear, filthy lucre, but as a shepherd under the chief shepherd. To demand of you to do what's right. To order you to walk in his way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just living for his glory to be revealed. Well, praise the Lord. Praise Temptation becomes a very small thing. When you give yourself over to His manifest presence. Hallelujah. I want, God wants the pain and the hurt that has existed in some people's lives in this church that has almost become a part of the church to be healed. And there's two things that will do that, that will result in that happening. The most of it, I've just, we've been just talking about it tonight, just in general. The first thing that has to come is just a repentance. Letting things go. But that has to be in the context of just, I no longer live. It is about, I'm going to be able to hear right from now on. I'm going to be able to move right from now on. I'm going to be able to think right from now. I'm not going to live in this pain and torment anymore. Because I'm just going to give all that I am and all that I have is foot wash and servant. To serve the church, to serve the kingdom, to serve this church. To be healed now. Let it be healed now. Let that which is lame be healed just to turn you out of the way. Let it be healed. Let it be healed. Tonight, recognize the divine order of God and submit yourself to it. Let this be the beginning of stepping into the dimensions of heaven that has been available to you all this time so that the remainder of your life, and let's just say the back half of your life in God will be far greater than the front end, front half. This back half of your life, you're going to fully live for God because now you understand. It doesn't take it, does it really, it's unfortunate that it takes a long time for some people to understand, but it's better to get it late than to never get it. No more pain in this church. No more offense in this church. No more holding on to your own life. Be a slave. 
that takes correction and enjoys it. He says, yes, it's true. I, I, don't want it. I don't want anything that's not right. I, I, I repent right now. I just submit myself to you, God. I'm ashamed of myself for not moving in, flowing in the Holy Ghost and shouting when I should be shouting. Hallelujah. I mean, there comes a moment in time where agreement is necessary. Huh? You sit there, you talking to somebody, they never, and they, you're asking them questions, they never respond. You're going to get a little edgy. It's Satan's trick. He's doing it all over the place. I had a pastor telling me not too long ago, said, you know, I was just in the meeting. People just sitting there and acting bored, stiff, person is a revivalist, wants the Holy Ghost, move of God. She said, I just closed the Bible, said, I'm going home. You guys stay here and look at yourself. Good. Good. Because that's what God did. He went home. Smith said, well, I just disagree with that. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. Read the Bible more and you discover he went home. I'm going to sit around with the disinterested. He comes to the hungry and the needy. You're going to find him in the places of the poor and the broken, the contrite. It's epidemic in the church. Prince of the power of error has done a very good job in imposing his way upon God's house. Somebody's going to get valiant. Somebody's going to say, what on earth is the mighty people of God doing standing here, acting this way, looking this way, talking this way, submitting themselves to this thing and they'll be deliverers in Zion. And I ain't to be one of them. Amen. Amen. And I ain't that you be one of them too. Amen. And I ain't that all that stand around right now be one of them. And all, all that has to be understood is how to cooperate with Father and do it His way because He's not going to change His way. He's not going to accommodate what we think He should do. He's not going to com accommodate the humanistic way of doing things. Concern for how people believe it should be spoken or presented. To bow before our in own personal human interest. I'm going to do it that way. Hmm. <laughs> just also be in prayer. Be, I'll, I'll pray in Jesus' name that you just be in prayer supplication, intercession, prayer for us because the Lord has some big plans for us this end of this week in Connecticut, in New England. And we want you to intercede. We want you to begin to pray. The New England would be shaken again as it was in the days of Ann Hutchinson. In the Holy Ghost power. Now there goes power coming out. I just recently read it. One of my, one of my distant relatives has recently wrote a book on Mary Dyer, first American martyr. And she was writing about the Pentecostal outpouring that took place among Anne Hutchinson and the people that were with her. And I had no idea. This shook, brought an earthquake. It was not only spiritual, but physical to New England. 
It was like in 1640. Lincoln. And I just learned it. And I said, Father, I'm going to New England. This isn't an accident. I'm on my way to New England. I'm on my way to New England. To the deaf my hear. I'm on my way to New England. Did the church of New England be sister? Could we take a hold of God? Could we be a part of pouring out our life? The other day, the Lord gave me this word. And I, and I tweeted, I put it on, if you follow me on Twitter or on Facebook, I put it on both. Sometimes I just do one or the other. And it was this, to lay hold on, to lay hold on God takes all your strength. Heart, soul, and mind. All your to lay hold on God. You want to lay hold on God? It takes all your strength. Try to catch Him. Try to catch Him and try to hold on to Him. God, the Almighty, the living God, the creator of all things, has made Himself available to us to reveal His power, His glory, through us? What? Wait a minute. I need to think about that a little bit more. Because it's true. Suddenly we begin to value it. Suddenly it becomes a reality to us. Oh, all of our affections, all of our passions, all of our desire, all of our... A man of God said one time, he said, you just start fasting. You got, you got things holding on to you. You just start fasting and praying. At about the 10th day, you really won't care for much of the natural things that you're normally interested in. About the 20th day, you'll lose all ambition and career-mindedness. About the 30th day, you start stepping in to a revelation that you far more than physical and you don't just live in a carnal, natural world. And it's true. A lot of people haven't fasted and prayed enough to get out of the, the realm that confines them. Earthly possessions, earthly and worldly concerns. But I know too that you can come stand in the present, same thing happened to you. It's good to see you, dear. Bless you. It's your children. That is awesome. Bless you guys. Father, thank you for your blessing and your anointing upon this life. Yes. That your daughter and her whole family can live fully for you, Lord Jesus. They can enjoy the goodness of heaven. Yes. Days of heaven on this earth. Yes. Becoming a Holy Ghost woman, filled with the Spirit of God. Oh, my, my, my. Living by the Word of God not held in some old Christian religion, but caught away up in the relationship with Jesus Christ, living out a heavenly life. Praise God in Jesus' name. I say it so. I say it so. Blessing upon baby. Come here. Blessing in the name of Jesus. I bless you right now in the name of Jesus. I put the blessing of heaven on you. I bless you right now in Jesus' name. I put the blessing of heaven upon your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. I hope all of you are taking care of everybody. I tell you, I'm going to take care of these folks. You're loving them like Jesus. That's the way you get to, another way you get to express, pour out your love for Jesus. I hope you get a knowledge of the Lord so you can be sensitive to when He shows up. He's round more than you recognize. True, it's true. So I want you to just find a bunch of people, hug them, tell them you love them, bless them in Jesus' name, say, my goodness, I'm never going to be the same after the night. We changed. We had changed. We radically changed. My goodness gracious. 
a divine explosion happened in the house. Everything that could be shaken got shaken. Hallelujah.